Podcast Judge! Hello everyone and welcome to episode 128 of Lost in Translation 1. I'm May. And I'm Jay. And this time we watch Showdown Between Geniuses, Thomas vs. Nanami. Or Genius Showdown. Toma vs. Nanami. I'm surprised you pronounced Toma correctly. Is it Toma? Oh no, it actually sounded like you said Toma, but I might be wrong. And all, I just want to note that it's kind of interesting that we actually have titles that are vaguely more or less similar between the original version and the English version. And I always find it interesting whenever they do that instead of making a, re- a, a pop culture reference or a reference to a song or what have you, and they actually more or less stick to the same title. And we don't have that many of those. Do we? No, not usually. And I'm surprised they didn't be like, oh, yes, the siege begins or something. Because their other stuff happened in this episode. Mm. We know they, they reference that it's a fight between Thomas and an army. And then it's a showdown between geniuses. And it's more or less the same in both versions. And that that's fine because that's, you know, what that's what the episode's about. The second episode that you watched this week is called The Sacred City's Last Stand. Or fiercely attack a curator's army corpse. Protect it, the holy city. The Digi News. First up, we have some news that is related to Australian fans, I guess, which I'm not sure how many of those who are listening. So at least two. I think one. I think we two. met one almost. Yeah, who, has, start. who hasn't started listening yet, but followed us on social media. That was great. So Try Chapter Two is actually coming out on Blu-ray and DVD in Australia in February next year. Several months after everywhere else got it, I'm pretty sure it came out in the UK last week. But America... Oh, no. No, maybe that was Chapter 3 that came out last week. Yeah, Chapter 3 came out last week, I think. No, no, no. no, Wait, no. Chapter 3 is not coming out officially until December, I think. So maybe it was Chapter 2. But Chapter 2 came out in America months ago because that's when we covered it. Look, the problem here is that it's really hard to find enough voice actors to dub the whole thing in fluent Australian. It's hard. Yeah. No, no. I can can see that. I can see that. They all... Every single voice actor you get has to be a criminal. Do you know what? Yuri Lowenthal not committing no crimes. No, never. Not that you know of. Not that you know of. The point is, I don't know why it's taking, it's taken that, that many months to release chapter two, considering we got chapter one, maybe like a month after. I don't know why it's taking so many months to release chapter six. Yeah, but that's the actual. Why does it take so long? Hey, we maybe might even have chapter three out by then in Australia. Maybe. Probably not. I'm so I'm so salty. I, I just want all this stuff. At least uh, Penguin Mage says that she'll give us her digital copy again, so we can cover Chapter Three and not wait for whenever Australia decides to release Chapter Three. Don't tell Toei how we're getting around their Australian embargoes. Well, it's it's Madman. It's Madman who's just like doing some weird dealings of some description. The next bit of Digi News is that Premium Bandai is hosting a survey. And this is a what products do you want to see? And it's more or less for people outside of Japan as well. So you can fill it in if you want and you can say, hey, Digimon, give us more Digimon. Wait, make what May do you spend more Premium money. Bandai? Do they Premium make Bandai? Toys? Yeah, Premium Bandai is basically where most of the good Bandai products come from. It's like a website. Okay, so you can't go in there and ask for more TV show. You have, you're have you going in to ask for like video games? Uh, toys? I, I'm not sure they do video games, but they definitely do toys. Okay, great. And, and like, did they do the digivices and stuff? Yeah, uh, they did the carriage. And they... I don't know what that is. You just said the word carrot, but you said it wrong. Carriage is the character watches. That that was Premium Bandai. I think the CSA digivice was Premium Bandai as well. With the Tai Chi goggles. Yes. Okay, so they do bits and pieces. Yeah, they do. They do like the expensive, high end stuff that will not just be sold in a toy store. Are, are you the one who keeps them up and running? Why why did they survey other people when you're the one bankrolling their entire operation? They should just address the uh, the survey directly to me. Is they here? No, it's <laughs> already filled in. Our one and only shareholder. What would you like us to make? <laughs> Ima- could you imagine though? And the last bit of Digi News is that Try Chapter Six was just given a release date. It is May fifth next year. So that is just a bit less than six months from now. So that is what, like eight months, se- like what, seven months from when Chapter Five was released. That feels like a very long time, and it makes me wonder why they didn't just hold off the release until June 6th, because then it'd be like part 6 on June 6th, and that was like the number of the beast that was in the prophecy for Ven- Venom Vandemon. So? They could bring Vandemon like back. Like they remember Venom Vandemon. Oh, I'm pretty sure they remember Vandemon. I bet they don't remember anything. They don't remember who Apocalypse was, even though he's in this. 
They don't remember who Pokemon is. They don't. Well, he's in Pokemon's tail. <laughs> yeah, I guess he yeah, is. Yeah, more or less. And everyone's like, I've never heard of a Pokemon before. What's that? And they see him and they're like, here, have a pizza. Problem solved. And he's got hot and cold running water. Oh, God. But no, so yeah, so that's May 5th. So it's a, quite a while away. We will be almost if not done with Digimon by then, I think. Oh my god, don't... Uh, now I'm going to fantasize about those days where I never have to watch this show ever again. Sailor Moon's next. That's fine. That's fine. It'll be different. It'll be different, and I'll I'll, I'll be happy. And, and we'll probably have to cover the Atmon dub when it comes out. Oh, you can do that. I'll find a friend. You can... You. I'm not watching all of Atmon again. As much as Atmon was good, I'm not watching it all again. Well, that's because normal people don't want to watch things twice in different languages. Yeah, you're right. But at least when I'm watching them together, I go, well, this is the activity I'm doing yeah. now. Not like, oh, a 52-episode show. I'll watch the whole thing again. Yeah, hope the dub's good. But now with none of the mystery that kept me interested... I mean, an English dub hasn't even been confirmed yet for Atmon. Weird. Well, a an English dub for we'll Young Hunters still hasn't been confirmed. Yeah, well, Digimon's crap, so... Atmon's good. Oh, yeah, what? but Atmon's not Digimon, is it? Young Hunters was alright, but I feel like Atmon took a lot of the ideas from Young Hunters and expanded on that, but I've, I've said that before. Why don't people call it Yunters? Good question. <laughs> is that what they call it in the fandom? Ah, oh, yes, no. Digimon Yunters. No, they're called the Trash series that no one likes. <laughs> yeah, Yunters! Because no, nobody likes Young Hunters, and that's <laughs> the sad. The Brat Pack of Digimon. <laughs> Basically. Wait, the Brat Pack? The Brat Pack were a bunch of actors that were in 1980s John John Hughes films. I don't no, think you the know. Brat Pack were a wrestling team that we watch now. Yes, but they're a reference to the actors that John Hughes really liked. And they're a reference to the Rat Pack, which is a band. Yes, but you said the, the Brat Pack. I did, but I was talking about the wrestlers. Yes. Yunders. <laughs> Anyway, for Lost News Lightning Mon, we got some fan fan art from Embermoto. <laughs> and it is because we were mentioning how Toma is kind of like Batman. So Embermoto drew us Toma and Galmon as Batman and Robin. Are you gonna scroll down and let me see this? I thought you already seen it. No. Oh. <laughs> I thought I bought it too. He's you. got the Robin ass on his gloves. I and love he's green, because he's Robin. Yeah. It's really it's really well done. So did you I don't remember in what context it was mentioned. But like, do you know? <clears throat> it was. I think it might have been just like a theory that a bad guy raises. But like, why Robin is dressed the way he is in green and red and yellow? No idea. Well, Batman wears dark greys and blacks, right? So he's hard to see. Yeah. Robin's in really bright colours. So the theory being, Batman brings it along this really bright, colourful child, so everyone aims at him. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> There's this moving target going around, which, and like, oh, he's way easier to see than Batman. So we'll all focus on the kid. That's awful. <laughs> what a boss move. That is that is awful. <laughs> what a baller, this Batman, this this man of bats. But what isn't awful is Embermoto's beautiful art. So we really appreciate that, and we we shared it on social media with Embermoto's permission, obviously. And yeah, so check that out. I'll link a link dump, and it's on all our social media thingy bobbies. The next bit and last bit of Lost in News lately, Mon, is that we went to our first convention as. Lost in Translation Mon. <laughs> okay, I know I know you were trying to sound excited because you're doing your big flaily arms. But we're on the radio, so it just made it sound like, yay, we we were on a thing. Well, like, ah. you can well, you can guess that my wavy arms were there. <laughs> no, but we're really we were really thankful to Madfest for inviting us along. May took a lot of good videos. I had fun on my like, You were there! I, I was around. <laughs> I was the editorial staff on your article. Yes, you actually did help me write my article because I, I can't. I, I'm very bad at writing, and Mum was just gushing and badly at it. Because it's, it was very much um, what's it flow uh, stream train, of consciousness. That's because that's how I write everything. I'm very train of thought. I write my notes like train of thought. I write my but it's, my guide like train, train train of thought. I write all my blog posts very train of thought. My like, favorite I've got to thing is how again. you didn't know how to spell cowboy bebop. What do you mean? You spelled it get b- cowboy bebop. <laughs> With a P. <laughs> Did I? It's Bebop with a B. I know it's Bebop. What was it, sorry? I know it's Bebop. Yeah, but you didn't every single time. Well, like, so I times? bolded and underlined all my changes. Did you not notice how Cowboy Bebop in all cases had the middle B underlined? I just thought you were being weird. <laughs> okay, J- Jay's lost it. Or maybe I thought I meant like... a did a weird typo in there, which I guess I did. <laughs> it was every time. You just didn't know how it was spelled. Yeah, so I wrote up the blog post and Jay edited it, which was really, really helpful because train of thought, very much so. And so, yeah, we were really appreciative 
to be given that opportunity and we would jump at the opportunity to be given press passes to any future event. I mean, we had to apply for it, but I'm, I'm glad we did. What were your favourite parts of the convention just while we... Dragon Ball. Dragon Ball. He liked other parts. You liked you liked Street Fighter Five. You asked me what my favourite parts were. Okay. Dragon Ball was my favourite two parts and then everything else was pretty good. Dragon Ball. That was great. So much fun. That game is awesome. And now, now we have to buy the game. Yeah, we do. Like, I'm, I'm not hundred percent sold on this immediately. So basically, to explain, what we're talking about the Dragon Ball Fighters. Is it Fighters okay, or Fighters Z? It's both. It's Dragon Ball Fighter Z or Dragon Ball Fighters. I want to say Fighters. It's really clever, like that. Mm, no, it is. It's a good name. And it's so a. They had a demo there on a bunch of screens, and the thing is. Considering it was a convention, like, there was never, like, a huge line for it. Like, you could get... Because they had enough screens that you could just sort of stand in line for maybe, what, maybe five minutes at the most. Mm. And the ma- and the matches are really fast. So, like, people will cycle in and out. Basically, it's a 3v3 hyper-fighting game with the, the big cast of um, Dragon Ball Z and mm-hmm. Dragon Ball Super. And it's great. It's just really, really good. It's a lot of fun. It's pretty. Uh, it's got a lot of really silly nonsense going on. So, a lot of people don't really get fighting games. And that's fine. And this has an auto combo system, so you can mash buttons and have fun and things will happen and crazy things will happen on screen and it's really good. So even for like really, really super casuals, you're going to have a great time playing this with your friends. Because I think in things like Killer Instinct's a great game. Yeah. It's really easy to start doing like crazy combos. But even in that game, like you kind of have to know the system. Yeah. And you also have to know the attacks. Like you have to know the... That Saber Wolf. I think yeah, that's, no, I haven't played for a while. It's back forward, back forward. So, and that's why I like it because it was easy. You still had to know controls, but in this, like, you can more or less get by with just button mashing. As an example, my favorite thing I will always remember about people playing fighting games badly is when we were at university, there was a screen with an Xbox One attached uh-huh. with the demo of Killer Instinct on it. Uh huh. And. I remember on many occasions, probably a dozen occasions, looking over at the screen and seeing two Jagos standing about half screen away from each other, just mashing light kick, standing perfectly still and not getting anywhere near each other. <laughs> that wouldn't happen in Dragon Ball Fighters. It's great. Um, and it's got weird, weird stuff going on. Like, they've just recently revealed Captain Ginyu, who, if you've ever watched Dragon Ball Z, G- Captain Ginyu leads the Ginyu Force, which is a team of, like, five characters. And so his character, all his special moves are calling in all his friends, and he puts all this weird stuff on the screen. And then his big level three super is he switches bodies with the opponent. So you are just now controlling their character and they're controlling Captain Ginyu and you switch health bars. But when you switch the other Captain Ginyu because he's not the real one, he doesn't have any of the team. So he's a nerfed Ginyu with no special moves. Yeah. And you can't call in any of the Ginyu Force and it's hilarious. And you can also get Dragon Balls. And you can, yeah, if you do, I think it looks like if you do a bunch of different numbers of combo, like yeah. 60 hit combo, 50 hit combo, 40 hit, um, between both players it but seems like wasn't it like revealed by mistake on a stream it was they just they it just accidentally went when they got like a five hit combo which i think was probably the one star ball yeah and then the shenron the dragon shows up and he goes make a wish and you can resurrect your friend or you can fill up your no it's not fill up your super bar you um, can fill up your you, health you can fill up a, a different bar as you, well you, you can fully fill up your health of one character or you can restore all the gray health on all your characters uh-huh. you can resurrect a character or you can get a burst yes which is amazing if that's the one that's like oh shen you make me the strongest Shh. Give me the strength of yeah. Goku. Yeah, give me the strength of Goku or something. Yeah. But no, it's, it's a very fun game. The game is awesome. I'm really, really looking forward. Because that's a game that I can sit down with friends and you can cycle in and out. And like no one... It, generally, I don't think anyone's going to feel bad playing that game. No, it's so it's so fun to look at. Like, yeah, just mashing buttons and doing weird stuff. It's... Cool stuff's gonna happen on screen every time. Yes. All right. I've gushed about this game forever. We also like we saw we saw Taiko ca- Taiko Drum ga- Master ha- Cowboy B Pops uh, no shooting way. gallery. Taiko Drum Master was there. The, the shooting gallery gallery was fun though. I had a lot of fun doing that. Yeah. You still have the the cards in your bag. I want my card. Oh, oh. The because the, the, they gave out prints. You didn't ask for it back. I, f- I kept on forgetting to. You you should come over to my house at some point. I, I mean Probably I am coming tomorrow. over to your house. Yeah. And so you had to do this shooting gallery, and if you didn't suck completely, you were given a print and I hit two and J 
I hit one. Well, to be fair, my gun did just be like, nah. You had a different gun. Yeah, yeah, I had the long rifle. Mine, mine kept sticking, out. though. And then the, the last one was kind of like flopped out. It was strange. I always find the Maverick is like the best of the nerf guns. I know the other ones are really cool, but the Maverick is clearly the best. Yeah, well, well, I had the Maverick, but it was just kind of used a lot by other people. You can tell because it was kind of like not doing what I wanted it to do. That's my excuse anyway. But that's always how nerf guns work. I distinctly remember when I was when Humans vs. Zombies was a big thing and I was younger and could run around a little bit more. Uh, I was in Humans vs. Zombies and I had the big, I don't know what it's called anymore, the one that's like a light machine gun that you have to sort of hold in two hands, mm-hmm. like, like this. Mm-hmm. Um, and it had a big chain belt and everything. And we were running around for like an hour. And I'm thinking, all right, when those zombies drop, I'm going to mow them down. You're going to finally gonna go chung, chung, chung. And finally, it, we, we'd been running around and we got to a point where the zombies were coming at us and we knew so we set up we all got in a big line and I put it down on like a park bench or whatever and they were coming and went and the motor starts going because it's like a machine gun yeah. and then it went and then like the thing wouldn't feed through properly and like the first bullet sort of just fell in front of the thing and then a zombie tagged me oh no <laughs> so after building myself up for an hour like yeah this will totally work out it like didn't even fire a shot properly awful awful but no the, the shooting gallery was fun and no Taiko Drum Master was great I'm glad that, that was there so that's the game we played a lot of in Japan we uploaded a lot of videos of Jay playing it it's the uh, when you hit the Taiko Drums it's like a rhythm game in the arcades and that has a new release on the PS4 which I will buy eventually when I'm not buying a GoPro or getting my car serviced. Well, you're not doing any of those things now, aren't you? So you can buy it right now. Well, yeah. I, I, huh? I just bought a GoPro, yeah? so huh? you just really want, you just want me yeah. to buy it. <laughs> no, it's it's a, that's a really fun game. I also want to get Street Fighter V because I sort of fell off the Street Fighter wagon. Street Fighter was really fun. I I keep playing it and realizing like my ranking level at this stage in Street Fighter is exactly where it should be. That's good. Because everyone below me is crap. Like, I'm at 3,500 points, which is trash. It's uh-huh. trash garbage. But it's super silver or ultra silver abouts everyone below me is terrible if i'm playing it i'm like it's dead and everyone above me oh, i'm outclassed i'm getting wow. murdered so i'm like i'm right there I'm, i know i know my level it's scrubbed I here just, but i, I know like, some tricks. i just like that there's a, a grappler and i should play grapplers and she's you, a wrestler because you really you really I play, like um, i play like gra- i i Play a Buki, and I loved a Buki. You love Mika. Our Mika she's a, is the she's a wrestler. Yeah. Yeah. Her name is Rainbow Mika. Because you're just like you, 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 you I, I just love grabbing. But like the thing is with a Buki, she's not a grappler. Also, she does the Irish whip. Also, what you can do is because the Irish whip throws someone right, and if they go a couple steps and then they don't hit anything, they'll fall over. But if you whip them into the wall, they bounce off it like it's the ropes. Yeah. And then you can command grab them out of that, and it does a bunch of damage. It's great. We also saw a voice actor. Then he did had a panel. This is Bryce Pappenbrook, who was. McC- Koto in Danganronpa, also Nagato in the sequel to Danganronpa, and he was also in Digimon Fusion. We he have... was also in that show Attack on Titan, you know, I know, it's pretty obscure, you might not have heard of it, but he was he was that Aaron, he's, he's, ja- he was uh, that Aaron Jagger. He's not Yuri L- Lowenthal. He's L- not L- Yuri Lowenthal. You, do you want to tell that story? That's true. It's kind of, uh, like, it's funny to tell with friends. I'm not sure it's so funny to tell on the radio, but I will. Basically, Bryce is a really had a nice panel for about half an hour. They asked him questions, and he was just very personable and told some stories about his experience as a voice actor. He was very passionate and so, very genuine. It was very, it was very nice It was to great. See. And so, they call for audience questions. and Which is, ne- every, which is ne- never good. Everyone lines up. Like, they all run into a line, and they give the microphone to the first guy for audience questions. And the guy opens with, Yuri Lowenthal is my favorite voice actor he played Sasuke in Naruto and uh and Boruto and he put in an excellent performance with that and he played this guy and he played this guy and he did amazing as those roles as well he's pretty much my favorite voice actor and he gives like a 30 second to a full minute prologue to this question just about how cool Yuri Lowenthal is and how great a voice actor is he is and then he finally pauses and the guy the guy who's like running the interview has to say okay so what's your question and he goes oh right okay yeah do you know if Yuri Lowenthal is coming next year mm. and I, Bryce Bryce handled it really well like he said well you should ask Madman that or ask him himself that I'm I'm just a guest I don't know and he handled it really well I love that the guy ran to the front of the get of the audience question line because he was desperate to know You've got to, from you- one voice actor do you know if this other voice actor I like more than you will be here next year you've got to admire his spirit though like you know I, I admire his gumption his chutzpah 
Yeah, he's got good chutzpah. He's got the good chutzpah. Like, yeah, he, he had a question. He was not afraid to ask it. And Tro- it was, Johnny, Chut- Johnny chutzpah over here. And then there was a, <laughs> another person in line did a really good Bryce Pappenbrook, like, impression. And it was, it was really solid. good. Like, and he, wasn't, he didn't just, you know, advertise himself as that. He asked his question, but he did an impression during it. And he said, oh, yeah. And Bryce, and Bryce knew the guy. He did it so well that it derailed the question. And they had to go back in time. And he almost walked off. And he was like, wait, wait, wait. What was your question again? <laughs> I forgot. Your had- question was a, was a smoke screen for just you wanting to show off to the audience i remember no but that was that it was really interesting and i've never actually seen like any panels with voice act like i've never actually been in person to a panel with a voice actor before so that was really nice to see and he was doing all the voices and that was really fun and it was it was just really great i didn't manage to get a signing with him though but i would like to try and maybe get interviews with voice actors maybe next time it it press things that'd be exciting next time you press things next time i press things and just the last thing I want to say is the cosplays were absolutely amazing at Madfest. That was a really solid one. The thing is, there weren't that many like double ups. I think there were, but no, you were m- so fooled because they looked so similar that you couldn't tell. No, but the thing is, I've been to like Manifest and I've been to other events where they've been like, okay, the, the, there's a group of like 50 Haruhi Suzumiyas, there's a group of 50 Boruto's dads. There, I mean, were, there, I guess. Weren't, there weren't that many double ups. But an- I mean, animes, okay, so okay, I'm not, we're, we're sort of beyond the point where like there's the biggest show yeah. and the biggest show generally has more than a cast of three people. Yeah, well, I'm not actually, I'm not, I'm not talking about people co- cosplaying the same character because people did cosplay the same character. There was tons of my hero though. There was people, even eight Bleach no, no, cosplayers. But people were doing different outfits for the same character. Like there were lots of Love Live people and they were all, all doing different outfits. Well, we're of the opi- uh, someone at least was of the opinion that like they all coordinated, so they knew. Uh, sometimes I don't like. Do all the Love Live fans know each other? Maybe. Maybe. I mean, th- you'd think. Also, Bleach isn't dead apparently. Like people still cosplay. Why Bleach. isn't Bleach dead? Bleach is actually over, and it finished badly. That's meant to kill your fandom. Well, if people you end, are passionate. If you end five hundred episodes badly, there were Vampire Night cosplayers, which I haven't seen for a while. Uh, lots of my hero. I think my hero was, was easily like the biggest, besides maybe. Love Love Live. I love the discussion of My Hero Academia as just very simply, it is the exact shonen formula, but done perfectly. Oh, yes. Like, it's not new. It's not even a deconstruction. It's a reconstruction of shonen. Also, huge cast of characters. There's it, tons of It ca- has almost as many characters as Twitter will now allow you to post. So 240. 280. Wow, that's a lot. It's a lot of characters, but they don't give you a number anymore, they give you an orb. What? An orb? Yeah, the orb fills up as you type. That's dumb. Give a number. It, it, you get a number in the last, like, 20 characters. Oh, well, that's fine. Yeah, but you, I just realized how big 280 characters is. It is. But anyway, so that's that's our coverage of Madfest. You can read our blog post that Jay edited and I wrote. If you have any feelings about that, please. Please, please do let me know. And on to Obnoxious Synopsis. The first episode that we're watching this week is called Showdown Between Geniuses, Thomas vs. Nanami, or Genius Showdown, Toma vs. Nanami. So they're rather similar titles. What do you think will happen in this week's episode? So that gives me almost no information whatsoever. I'm going to guess broadly we're going into a the kids defeat the Biofrontier kids arc. Right. One at a time. And they're going to be sort of paired up this way. And you must be really happy that Nanami's with Toma. Oh, I'm very happy. Around. Also, the episode title seems to imply that she's a genius. Which, which is also cool. And I guess we'll see that. We haven't had anything suggesting that up till now. Which is interesting. Well, we've had her sassing Ivan. Yeah. And so, which I think what's even more interesting here is that Ivan's going to be fighting, um, presumably, and you'll tell me what the episode title is and I'm sure I'll be wrong, but Ivan will be against Yoshi next episode. And that will be really weird because that's a strange matchup. Well, considering he's been hitting on her. Yeah, I guess they have, they've set a little bit of a groundwork yeah, the, on that. They had that it, it's not just, we wouldn't, if they did pair that them up, it wouldn't be too much out of nowhere because like this one is. he keeps on saying things about, I have to confess to my sweetheart and being really creepy and weird. Who so, I've never actually even talked to. I've just yeah. been thinking really loudly at her. Yeah, but I'm... I think he thinks he's thinking just really loudly. I don't know. I just think he's really stupid. But the thing is, I... I, I back to the point. I'm just really happy that they're not pairing the girls up. Like, remember in Frontier, how you mean every time, yeah, yeah, literally with every bad guy that has been a female, they will pair that up against the female characters because you know th- th- they want to be on the equal level. Yeah, how and- Lady Devimon fought Angelman? Yes, <laughs> it's every time. Every time, and then again, it happened with the uh, the Demon Core in in Zero Two. We had Lady Devimon against Sylphimon, hmm. and it was always just sort of girls against girls. And then Frontier was Ranamon and Izumi, and that was the only one, only 
She could have easily been able to defeat another one, but because there was only one girl, she was only able to defeat Ranamon. Yeah, and, like, water is strong against ground type, so she really should have been way better against, um... I'm losing this joke because I can't remember what long nose ground uh, man. One was. Grumblemon, two Azumi was air was, or what? wind. Um, Ranamon Ran- Ran- was, was water. Okay, so air. I mean, she, could, she should have been able to turn into her girlfriend. But ground types can't even hit air. Hit fly- flying types can they? No, they can't. Well, then that's an easy one. But flying isn't effective against rock. Yeah, but I mean, it's it's not like I mean it it doesn't. Ground doesn't affect... We're going to Pokemon too much. It's so much better, though, isn't it? No, it's really not. Um, It's really awful. (laughs) You just don't like Hawaii. The anime is not good. The anime is repetitive, and they're doing basically more or less the same thing the boy's done. Um, It's fun for a bit of, like, turn my brain off and watch, but, like... Sure, which is something that you give Digimon credit for all the time. Yes, but that's what I'm trying to think of a good thing to say about Digimon. That's, like, a a thing that I can't Isn't that even more sad? Yes. Yes, it is. Which means the Digimon is objectively worse? It's still better than... It's built to better than Pokemon (laughs) by by quite a bit. Sure. Um, Okay. Yeah, so that's that's my predictions, I guess. Do you think anything will annoy you? Uh, the only thing that will annoy me is if a well, look they haven't been treating Tom like he's a genius lately, right? Mm. It, it's going to be them waking up and like it'll be like, oh yeah, he's always been the genius of the group, yeah, yeah, and they'll pretend like that's always been his thing. It's not. It's just a character trait. Right. And also, Nanami being a genius out of nowhere, as much as I think it'll be nice, they had every opportunity to build this as a character for her, and they haven't. I mean, I'm I'm fine with them bringing it into just an episode because no, but, the, I feel like it was hinted at whenever she was sassy or she was calling the other. Maybe being stupid. a sassy doesn't make you a genius. I don't think you understand what's happening here. Is low key sexist and you uh, potentially they're making the girl the smart one. Maybe because the whole point is that you is the surprise. She dresses in a certain way, she acts in a certain way, and all of a sudden here she's a genius. You're going to be like, oh, I didn't expect that. See, I, I watched the the episode and it, it's not like done in a way it's like, oh, everyone's surprised. Like no, not no one, everyone's no surprised. One's surprised. Okay, well, I, it seemed to me like that would be why they didn't mention it no. earlier. Sorry, I. I was ascribing negative intent to... What's the... Don't ascribe to villainy what you can ascribe to stupidity. Yeah. Because that's what this is. Oh, we didn't plan this well in advance. Who are we, no, how are we gonna? How are we going to make them fight? Um, I, f- I feel it's natural enough. But I guess you'll find out when you watch the episode. Sure. All right. So do you think we'll find out what this big power-up that Kurata gave the, the, the I children I think they'll is? be able to evolve now. Like to the Well, the, when they bio-evolve, they'll be a different thing. That's one level higher. Any, any predictions for what they'll be? One of them will be a bird. One of them will be a snake like i don't know one of them will be snake what do you want from me here one of them will be dinosaur i guess one of them will be dancer <laughs> one of them will be human human and uh so do you think it'll be a good episode um you know what yeah sure i, I think they can do an all right job that's good i'm, I'm glad <laughs> you were so shocked I know, there I was, was like, like a silence whoa whoa he said uh, yes yeah, honestly because lately you've said no it'd be bad and then like when we come to watch the episode like yeah i was right it was bad yeah well you know it's just I can't see any way for them to do this other than writing it like tightly. Like it's you have to tell a story beginning to end of this of this conflict, which is probably going to be good. Unless you tell me right now, the episode two, Nanami still fighting Toma, part two. Well, it's not that. Okay, you're, great. About, you're about to know the title. Uh, what rating do you think you'll give it? I think it'll get. Look, I'm going to be really optimistic and give it a seven. Jeez. But uh, that's probably the highest good. you've given it for what like. For 15 episodes? quite a while. Because I feel like quite it's got episode while. 31 and 32 this week, and you've been kind of negative lately, so I'm, I really hope that it lives up to your expectations. The second episode that we're watching... Oh, wait, before I do that, filler or not filler, I guess it's kind it's, of obvious. It can't be. Yeah. Now... Actually, it technically could be if the fight is not conclusive, but it will be, so it's not... Or filler. if it just sort of ends like if it's Schrodinger's filler. No, it, okay, Schrodinger's filler is important in to understand. It's not just filler. It's a series of filler mm. that... At one of them has to be real. And one of them was important and put the plot forward. But all the other ones put the plot forward the same way. I vote for the one on the moon. No, but that was different. It was how they... Yeah. It was every episode they took over. The, they always grabbed a piece of the mm. land and the fights ended the same way and no one progressed at all. Except a piece of the land was taken and so, like, things happened. I don't think anything in Savers gets to that level of formula it's really it's a really specific yeah but i think savers actually hasn't followed many formulas so far except for the perfect evolution arc mm-hmm. which was basically like evolution episode follow the formula of having an argument filler th- uh, not filler then <laughs> yeah um second episode it's called the sacred city's last stand or fiercely attack karada's army corps 
So yeah, I said it correctly that time. You're proud I'm of so me? I'm so proud of you. Not his army's corpse. <laughs> his army's corpse. Protect the holy city. What do you think will happen this episode? Uh, so Karada obviously was planning to fight the um, at the holy city, which is just um, which is El Doradimon. Yeah. And they're going to go fight there, and all the pixie mon are going to be there, and they're all going to die because they're all stupid. And then the guy in the mask is like, oh my god, we're going to fall. And then the digital world, even though it's only been a couple of days, will fall and everyone will die. Oh no, the apocalypse. And then I'm going to go with Yoshi will challenge Ivan and there'll be a big fight But it won't conclude this episode. Right, that's, where so I'm, that's where I'm going with it. You think now. the Nanami fight will conclude, but the Ivan Yoshino one won't? Yes. Do you think it's because she's a girl and she can't handle things? like No, um, I think it's because there's Zoe? a story stuff they have to do early. They have to do all the city and beginning the siege and stuff early. Right, right, right. Unless you think that fight's going to be really short. Like, I think it'll go into the next episode. Right, okay. But it probably will look like she's going to lose by the end of this episode because she's hopeless no because that's how dramatic tension works well, I, I, guess, I guess we'll find out do you think anything will annoy you in this episode <sighs> look I'm already I'm annoyed in advance that Eldoradimon is considered to be like the last bastion of Digimon that's the attack on the digital world has been going for two days. Well, here's two days in which this super Digimon that he's brought in, we're all distracted. Okay, but you do realize why it's so important. Because Karada literally said, obviously not in ep- the, the episode, last episode, because this is the second episode this week, but the the second episode that we watched last week, and he's all like, all I need is to kill Eldoradimon and get his life force, and then I have enough power. Yes, but that's so not... So that's why it's important. But it, sandwiched around that was, this is the last city of the Digimon. It's not true. Well, Okay, if it could be true, right? It could be true in the world. But if that's the case, this is really stupid. I, I don't like the idea well, who, that... Who said it was the last city of the Digimon? They did, in that scene. Oh, really? Literally. I just thought... No, I just thought it was like the last hope of the digital world was that city. Also, how is that possible when... Also, I guess it's because it's the capital. But I still say that it's mainly important because if he absorbs the life force from it, then he gets enough power to do whatever he's planning. I've covered this already. How is it possible this is the last hope of the digital world when they suck against Gizmon, but Bancho Leomon can kill like four Gizmon easily? And if you had Bancho Leomon and then a bunch of Digimon who were a quarter of his strength, you could have easily beaten Karada by now. Well, Bancho Leomon has the weakness that he's a Leomon. Yeah, but like... Is it that he's literally a million times stronger than every other Digimon in the digital world and he also doesn't care if the digital world is destroyed? Mm, okay, I see what you're saying. Like, what? what's his deal? Why is he sitting around training these kids when he's so much better than them and he could have just solved all the problems? Yeah, you mean like Bancho Leomon just rocks up, punches Karada in the face, Karada dies yes, with this big, left, absolutely. big line punches him. And what's he going to do? Stop him with Gizmon? We know those don't work. No, that's, that's reasonable. Uh, yeah, why is it Bancho Leomon being Bancho more Leomon would have solved the entire problem by himself if he was vaguely reasonable but i guess he's not i guess he's just a big dumb line and that this is the sort of thing that makes stories like hard to believe like the old master that like teaches the main character super kung fu is always like really old and is just teaching theory that's what yoda was mm. and also the empire is very large whereas in this case the empire is not very large the Empire is a couple of robots. Right. And the world that's trying to defend itself is huge and has lots of powerful dudes in it. Mm. And they just don't care, I guess. Right. I don't know. It's so weird. Do you think it'll be a good episode? Not not really. And it just has to do with... I, the episode could be totally fine, right? Mm-hmm. Objectively. Mm-hmm. But I'm going to be sitting there subjectively like, this is really dumb the whole time. Because I know that the focus is going to be like, this city is so important because it's the last thing we have. Because that's about the perspective of the Digimon. And I believe that they said it themselves when they captured the kids inside El Dorotimon. Right. Like, this is the last city. It's really important. So we've banned humans from it. Oh, okay. Except that one human. Because all the humans are evil. Except that one. But they're all evil. That's why we make exceptions. What rating do you think you'll give it? Five. Okay, so one good episode and one be- yes. uh, okay episode. Correct. Filler or not filler? It's, it's, well, it really can't be because they're advancing it by putting the siege forward and everything. Okay, but at least we've, we've got two episodes of filler one's good one's not so good hopefully there we are hopefully we have two good episodes i mean at least we see okada in two days yeah but that but that's not three that, days that's that's not that's not podcast that's wrestling but, uh, but that makes me feel better well by the time we record this it'll be 24 hours away
Yay! Okay, on to the show where it is 24 hours away from May and Jay watching a really an amazing wrestler in person. Bad Luck Farley will also be there. Yay! <laughs> and Brooksy is fighting Dowie. Yay! <laughs> the wrestling version of my dog. Alright, I guess on to the rest of the show. da 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 do Episode 31 starts up with Toma talking to the rest of the team and he's coming up with this plan about what they have to do. And he's being rather strategic in what he's saying and it is really good to actually see that in the character and it's good to not actually see it just in the the main character either. And he's saying, look, you can see oncoming enemies from this point, so this is the best point because you can't, gunfire can't reach us because they're on the opposite shore. And Baramon's impressed. And he says, wow, Masaru, I'm really impressed. And Masaru's like, yes, well, I, I, my dad protected this place and so will I. I don't understand this position because, like, gunfire goes a long way. Way further than they clearly think it does. Maybe it's digital gunfire. Oh, come on! <laughs> Like, Toma knows how far digital gunfire goes. I feel like it must fall off at a certain point, right? Yeah, but not like a hundred meters. I thought it was like a kilometer away from the other shore. No. Oh, I thought it was like a kilometer. No, it's a couple of hundred meters at most. Considering Masaru was running for like ten minutes, I felt like it was a sizable dif- dif- when like distance. When was he running for ten minutes? What? Like, during the whole Nanami fight, like half of the Nanami fight, Masaru and Akuto were just running, getting to the others. Like, getting from Eldoradimon to where Kurata is. He's just running. And he's running for half the episode. Yeah, but that's anime time. That doesn't mean anything. I still have a feeling that it's at least like a kilometer, and I feel like it is far away. I mean, I guess, but if you're just firing like big laser cannons, he doesn't know how far lasers can fire. He just doesn't know that. Kurata invented these things. I know, I feel like he's just been studying from what he's seen before and how far they go. But you're, you're right. He, you're very generous. You're right. He, he shouldn't know straight away how far it is, like, so easily. And be, to be able to say it so matter-of-factly and so positively. But the important thing this is doing, right? It is setting up that the water is an important part of the defense of Eldoradimon. Yes. Okay. Now, I have a simple question for you. Uh-huh. Don't the Gizmon fly? Yes. Yeah, so, why is the water any impediment whatsoever? I thought that was just because Eldoradimon needed water to be able to move because the water was there from when Diamond Masara was able to punch a desert into from water basically. It seemed clear to me that what Nanami was saying when she was talking about the dam was that the water was a defense for Eldoradimon and he needed it to be safe. No I feel like he just needed it to be able to move or be able to survive because without it he's just kind of stuck in the ground. I got the sense that it was like wonder but he was walking through the forest when they first found it. Yeah I feel like it needs to be in a wetland area and if he drained this area it would still be wet i don't i don't know but the thing is it's it didn't just become dry right but the desert all of a sudden became wet so i don't i don't know how digital world physics works but even so it would just walk off to the trees right like it it can't be that okay then i'm I'm not sure what the water defense did then i I was under the impression that it was because eldoradimon needed water to survive but you're right the ground would still be more or less a little bit wet and if they were going to blow him up anyway it doesn't matter if the water's there or not so i'm I'm not sure why the water's there because like what's the difference to the attack that happens after they drain the water than before yeah no you're right all the gizmon just fly over anyway no you're right and they do that's what they do when they approach him they just fly there they don't walk like i don't think many gizmon have been shown to travel via walking none of them actually yeah so this moment when baramon's being impressed by masaru and masaru is sort of somewhat taking the credit for it, but not as much in the original version. In the dub, however, Baramon's just saying, oh, Marcus, you're so great, and Marcus is just really obviously taking the credit for it instead of just saying, well, of course I would want to protect this place. My, my dad hero. Did. And it's like, it's more <laughs> annoying, but you can also understand Toma getting annoyed with this more. It was always kind of fair. He's like, he's like, I've come up with a great plan to defend us. Yay, other guy! Yeah. Which is just the Digimon all being idiots. Because, like, the son of the guy who saved you doesn't deserve any praise just because he was born. Yeah, he hasn't done anything yet. And then in the dub, Thomas adds on to when Galmon is saying how Thomas came up with the idea. Thomas says how Marcus is the legend's son and he's kind of salty about it. Because he wants his dad. Mm. Because he's Batman. Na 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 Tom. Oh. Nanami is watching and is able to read their plan and she says it's a good strategy. Karata says it must have been Tom's idea because he's a genius like her. Koki is mad and throws his chip packet on the ground after like 
assaulting it heavily. And I just want to know why does Cocky keep on attacking Chip Packets? Because he's an angry. He's so angry right now. You leave him alone. Is this how to show that a character is a mean character? They just destroy Chip Packets? You know, with Ken, they showed him kicking a puppy. With Cokey, he crushed up a Chip Packet. Ooh, what a bad guy. That, that's how you might Unforgivable. Kick puppies and screw up Chip Packets, I guess. He throws it on the ground. And Ivan says that garbage belongs in the bin. Those are the rules. And then he says, if you if you liken those guys to garbage, I just made a good pun. And he's so proud of himself, and I kind of love him. I feel like in the... what's the, He says something else in the Japanese, uh, like, this no, is no, why no, we're no, losing. No, 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 that isn't... No, so no, that, in the English. In the English version, he says, trash must be disposed of properly. See, if everyone followed the rules, like me, we'd be winning. But I'd never say that we're not winning out loud. It's really weird that in the English, he considers that they are losing. That, yeah. That's obviously his opinion, but... They're, they're losing even in the sense where, like, Kurata goes, ah, yes, we're just playing with them. What? It doesn't seem like they're losing at all. They're, I mean, they're still in the process of fighting, and yes, they did previously lose, but Ivan knows that they now have the ability to evolve further. Well, speaking of just playing with them, why does Kurata say that? Yeah, I'd want to kill them. I, I, that'd be my plan. Like, wh- how many times has a bad guy said, I just want to play with them first, and then immediately lost during that time? But think about Kurata's character, right? If the reason we, we believe believe Kurata does what he does is that he thinks that Digimon are a huge threat and he's very afraid of them right mm-hmm. that's the whole thing this is this entire thing is to cover up his ego being damaged because he's he was afraid of Digimon mm-hmm. and now he's convinced himself that they are an existential threat to humanity why would he play with them yeah and also like I guess they're trying to go to the thing that he's like wacky but even then it's like I don't know I feel like he's pretty adamant about his goal and he wants to actually I don't know defeat these guys and he's quite serious about that I don't feel like he'd want to delay that at all. Like, this is going to be a weird phrase, right? But there's no playtime in genocide. Yeah. So it's just, it's a weird thing that's happening here where, again, Kurata is two different people and he has interesting elements of two different bad guys, but when they're put together, they don't make any sense to the point where you go, I don't, he becomes boring because there's nothing compelling about him anymore because he's, he's lol random, the villain. Right. Right? Yeah. Because think back to when he was sneezing in Agumon's face that wasn't a character no, trait I, that no, was a weird thing he was no, doing no that was a facade he was trying to put up this weird sort of like i'm a digimon otaku facade like you can't just say that's just him being lol random and a badly written but no it, that was that was a fa- come on that was a facade because he merely drops this silliness now he's being obviously evil so you can't just say oh th- that's just a badly written character no that was called a facade and if he came in saying hello digimon i would like to destroy you then that's not th- that that's a, that's an awful bad guy like that's no like you're gonna be shot right then and there no i mean like okay first of all you wouldn't have to do it that way you could have him being obviously uncomfortable around digimon because like and he was he sneezed on him no that's not sneezing doesn't mean you're uncomfortable what are you talking about when a spider's around do you sneeze on it it scares me mate You've never sneezed on a spider. Come on. That'd be scary before you attack me. But you wouldn't sneeze as a result, right? It was in my nose. <laughs> no, but my point like, is Help that me out here by answering my questions it, seriously. It is, it is almost shown that it was like an allergy. No, it really wasn't because it He's, never happened ever yeah, again. Yeah, I know, but I'm just saying it, the way that it was sort of dated in that clip was it was like a he was uncontrollably sneezing because of the digimon he being sneezed there twice and it wasn't because like the whole point here what i'm trying to say is because it happened literally only once yeah it isn't a character trait it isn't something you can read anything into yeah, besides facade. he sneezed in a digimon's face once it's a facade it doesn't not necessarily it, I, I think it's, it's not like, part of the act because it was just a full big sneeze yeah because he act, so he acts stupid so they don't think that he's trying to kill digimon but he the also side. still acts like that now after he's dropped the facade not really. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Nanami got defeated? Oh, well, whatever. Like, no, that, he's no, still lol random the no, villain. No, that's just him not caring about his henchmen because he's like, well, well this, I, I've, I've, I was able to get this far basically without them. I can just have the Gizmon. Let's he, go back to what I was saying then. Oh, Digimon are so scary they all have to die. But let's play with them. He can't be both. Yeah, okay. No, I'm, I'm saying it's stupid that he wants to play with them. But I'm saying that him not caring about the death of Nanami and then later Ivan, I don't feel like that's being lol random. I feel like that's just him not caring 
talking about his henchmen and that makes him not terribly written because it's showing that he doesn't actually care for the people working for him. He doesn't care about any of the other, the basically the, the henchmen around that aren't just Nanami, Ivan and Koki, it, the other people who with the guns. He doesn't care about them. He cares about himself and he cares about his own world and he has his gizmon and he has more faith in his gizmon than everyone else and he doesn't care if all the other humans die because he's just in there for himself okay, and I think so that's why he's not terribly written. If he didn't care about them, why would he have brought them along? And shouldn't he inherently care that they were defeated because that means his plan is being delayed? I feel like it's cannon fodder. I, th- I feel like he just... he he'll, it'll, It's worth a shot for him for tr- to try to kill them, but it's no big deal if they do get killed. Like, it's just like, well, it was worth a shot. I don't care. Because they're tools to him. They, they aren't actual things. It's like, if you are using a hammer and you're hammering a, a screw and may, maybe the screw... Hammering a screw. That's okay. what you do. You, did you, you knock on the screw. Why are you talking... Okay, are you doing this intentionally? No. So, the, the so screw, you're not doing it intentionally. I don't know what you're talking about. Hammers don't hammer screws. The bolts. The nuts and Nails. Bolts. Nails. There we are. Okay, because I'm thinking... Yeah, yeah. No, you're no, trying no, to get no, to no, a point right. where, like, yeah, oh, yeah. the function was done even though the tool was wrong? No, no, no. I'm just saying, okay, so you're hitting a nail. Okay. There we go. That's what it's called. The nail bends. Yeah. Well, I wasted a nail, but it could have gone in, and you throw away the nail, because you don't care, you have other nails. And the other nails, in this case, are the gizmon. And the broken nail is, in that case, also Ivan or any of the other bio hero hybrids. He doesn't care, he's just like, oh, nail broke, throw it away, and then he uses a screw, and he's just like, well, this is just useless. My point is that he thinks of them as, as tools, and if they die, he, yeah, we just got more. Okay. And also, he could probably find another three people to do his bidding for him. He'll just prey on their weakness, like, oh, you have, you need money? Okay, I'll give you money. Just, I'll, I'll do some experiments on you and you have to kill these guys. Like, he, he could probably do that again. How if- do you conscript an army? Hey, you want to not be bored? It's like, okay, so I will say in advance now, these guys have way more interesting reasons for being here than I thought they did. Not, not it's amazing. Great. It's, you know, it's good, though. It's but good that we actually have way, vi- villains. Way better that there was something. Yeah. And I automatically care way more about them than Kurata because I understand why they're doing what yeah. they're doing. Also, they're, and they're sympathetic. What, except for Nanami. She's, she's, she's just awful. Yeah, she's, but she's good. It, it's it, when I say she's awful, I mean like she's, she's a bad person. She is a bad person, but that doesn't mean she's a bad like a bad character. Yeah. Her character is written well. The only thing that's missing from them being like the alias three here is they don't really. Okay, we got to see why all the alias three were with Neo. Yes. Like, how did you get from your character, which we totally understand, to being with this guy? What did he provide? What? How did you get in contact with this dude? And I don't know if Ivan was a mercenary before. He's. I don't know how old he is actually. Do you know? I don't know. I just I, for some reason I thought he was in his thirties, but now he's hitting on like an eighteen-year-old and, and thought that twenty twenty-year-olds were too old for him. So I presume uh, he's actually like a kid, but he's just big. He. It is possible that he could just be like maybe Yoshino's age. Yeah. So if that's the case, like, how did this eighteen-year-old become a mercenary and then meet this evil scientist? How did Nanami, being a bored genius, meet Kurata and then get convinced? A Digimon are a thing, and B you should kill them. That's fun. Like, that is a step that would make them really compelling, and it would make Kurata much more interesting. I, I would I would love an episode where just basically, like, Kurata meets this, this group. That'd be great. Because Kurata has had no interaction with them that says anything about himself. Yeah. He's just like, hi, henchmen, do thing. That sucks. How come when we see these guys actually talk about themselves, they become automatically interesting? Because they're written kind of okay. Which shows that the writers do have the ability to write characters that you think are well written. Like, I th- I got to the end of this, and I thought Ivan's actions are more or less justified. Like, oh, yeah. I, I get why he's doing this. Ivan's really sympathetic. Nanami's just kind of like, a, okay, you're just a horrible person, and you, you're really smart, and you're smug, and you're quite awful. But she's written... And it's... I don't know, she reminds me of a dang and romper character for some reason. Yeah, because she's like Celeste. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's it, she dresses the same and she acts the same. Yeah. And except it, that she cares about someone. Does Nanami care about someone? She cares about Thomas. I know, I think that... I, I Only because I feel like she sees herself in Thomas. Yes. Because they're both geniuses and she's just like, well, you should be like me. Okay, saying there is a reason for yeah. her to care about him does not change the fact yeah, that she does. I know, I didn't think about, like, she, she actually cared about him. I'm like, no, no, she, she does. But the thing is, I mean, I like Nanami. Me, but I just, I feel like it's because I like well like a character that's not terribly r- badly written. Also, for some reason, she reminds me of Ranamon. I don't I don't see it. I think it's because the voice, even though it's a different voice actor in the dub, she's 
and it just sounds like Ranamon's voice actor for some reason, even though it's not. It's Mimi. Do you mean Ranamon or Ranamon? Ranamon. Oh, yeah, I still don't see it. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Maybe it's because she's like the, the token girl. You mean the evil girl? Yeah, that's Ranamon for you. Yeah, but I don't know. Maybe it's just the voice in the English version. But the thing is, I, I, I think she's fine. Anyway, so back to the part of the episode we're up to. We have the, the main characters and they're crowding around and they're talking about what to do. Agamon comes in and drew a picture of the humans that he saw. It's really bad and Agamon thinks that they're doing a sweat drop because the foe's so strong and they're just like, he's just like, oh, is the foe that formidable? And just, it's a really bad drawing of Karada. It's, it's quite funny. Like, this was actually a really funny moment. <laughs> the scouts are really crap. Mm. But also, why wouldn't Agumon be a good drawer? I like how he's not. He's a ninja. It reminds me of that time that Taichi drew a map and it was awful. You know what would make way more sense? If they had just written down what they saw? Like a description? Yeah, but this is funny. No, it is. It's fine. This episode had I'll a few funny it. bits in it. Masaru then addresses the crowd and they, he says, look... We know where the enemies are. And Akuta comes up and he's like, I want to fight too. Thomas says that it's an obvious trap like because they were to find their position so easily. It's really obvious. And Masaru, being Masaru, you know, he's like, I don't care. I'm going to charge right in there and we're going to punch him in the face. He's just like, well, I don't care because it's a trap. If it's a trap, you know, we're going to get him anyway. Thomas says they shouldn't be careless. And I just want to say in the dub, instead of when Thomas says, look, it's a trap because we were able to find their position easily, he says that Karada just wants them to move out of their position. So it's more like about their position rather than their own position, if that makes sense. Look, they're both technically still traps. Yes. But they're just traps. Oh, one was implied and one is very specific, I guess. Everyone agrees with Masaru and that upsets Tomer a little bit. And so it should. It should. But what's worse in the dub is that Marcus is almost more smug about the whole thing. Like, he's almost rubbing it in Tomer's face. That's English. Like, that's something that we don't, haven't seen a lot in Savers, but is a trademark of the English version of Digimon, which is the kids are meaner to each other. Mm. And I just noticed that a lot of the time in the dub, they just, they make Marcus not as good as he actually is. Like, he's quite a nice person. Yes, he's a little, he's thoughtless and he'll just dive into danger, but that kind of just makes him Marcus, right? I tend to think so. In the dub, he's just awful. Well, worse, I guess. I like when he dives off the jetty and into the water. And Agumon moves it, moves the boat i made a gif of that it's it's the best so this then yeah this is where that happens that that scene that we were just talking about where the, he's like don't worry it'll be fine he jumps off the of the cliff and then he jumps onto a boat but the boat moves because Algamon's just like we can go now I, I i can totally empathize with thomas here because i can't imagine how angry he must be when he says, this is a trap. And not only does the other person not say, no, I don't think it's a trap. They say, that's fine. I'm just going to go. Mm. <laughs> that kills me. I feel like that's happening a lot in media nowadays whenever they say, but it's a trap, and the character just goes, I don't care. Can you give me an example? Well, I feel like it happened in something I watched recently. Maybe maybe it was Dang Was it? I think it might have been in Dang Romper, but maybe not the anime. Maybe, maybe Ultra Despair Girls, but I might be wrong. It's something recent. Recent enough that I have a memory of it. I don't, so... Well, like, it, it might be Danganronpa one half then. Could be. Yeah. That wasn't that recent. It was recent to you. It was recent to me. But that's, why, that's why I said it was something recent to me. Anyway, so Toma and Gaumon are concerned, and Yoshino says that Masaru takes risks because he trusts Toma. In the dub, Yoshi says that he knows that if Masaru screws up, Thomas has his back. And then we get the opening, and yeah, you're right, the Royal Knights are super in there. Hey, what's that white card behind Masaru? Do you watch this show, by the way? Just, just say, because that's kind of what he has around his neck. Why would I? It's the dog tag that re- Masaru has been wearing around his. Tag? It's it's the dog tag. Doesn't look like a dog tag. It's the dog tag he's been wearing around his neck since the first episode. Wait, do, do you, you have a picture of Masaru around? Because I don't think that's what dog tags look like. I'll get one. You know, it's it's a weird looking dog tag. It looks more like a razor blade, but uh. I mean, like I'll believe you, but also it, no, it's it's his. It is his dog tag. It's just a blown up one. I'll try and get an image of it. It's just it's just it just reminded me of like Tamers and like oh, it's, it's a it's car. Just, no, it's just a it's just Can a square. It's just like a rectangle. Like thing around his neck. I mean, there's like no detail in this, like whatsoever. Yes, exactly. And the one behind him was really detailed. So, you know, can you understand why I might not have made the connection? Oh, I made the connection because that's what it, that's what it is. But what if it wasn't? Here's a more detailed one around his neck, so you can kind of see what it is more. Oh, that's a gift, but it, it, it does give you a look we'll, at it. We'll stop this. It looks like a device. Yeah, it's 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 a dog tag around him, so that's also in the opening. Why would it be so important they put it in the opening? Because at one point during the show, again, do, do you watch the show? Yes. Masaru touches it, and he says, "This is from my dad." Or or at least he does in the dub. But it's so important, it, it gets a whole bit in the opening. It's important to his... Like, it has some relevance to his father. If we're going to find out later, it's a totally different thing. And you'd be like, ha I was misleading.
leading you so you didn't get spoiled. No, I'm actually... And I'll be like, yeah, fine. That's right. exactly what it is. It's the thing around his neck. That is so incredibly lame. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry that it's not like we're not going to the Tamers universe. Because, like, all the Royal Knights are showing up. <laughs> can't believe you missed that. Yeah, I'm completely... Like, I love this song. Do you watch the show? Seriously. No, I listen to the music. It's a great... It's a great opening. Also, I'm surprised you watch the opening again. Usually you skip them. Who are those people with the chess pieces? I've never seen... Like, are they showing up later? Shut up. Just stop, stop. <laughs> you're annoying me. No, but the Royal Knights are super there and it's super <laughs> obvious that they're there and it's kind of like they're standing on like a hill or something and they're looking dramatic and and cool. They really, really have uh, thrown away the opportunity to have Royal Knight Chessmon. That's awesome. <laughs> do you think the Royal Knights are evil in this? I don't know yes, if I of course that. I do. In fact, I think, and I, you have asked me before and I'll say it again, I think that so, they'll show up and someone will be like, Royal Knights, they're the good guys. Oh no, why are they being evil? You mean basically when ever... Literally ever, every time. Every time ever... Any bad guy has like has shown no, up. No, no, no. Over the time, it's like, oh, don't worry, that Digimon is really most, good. Most no, most bad guys that are actually the big bad guy. Oh right, yeah. Are like that dude's evil. We know that. Devimon was evil. Edamon was evil. The Dark Masters were all evil. Yeah. The only people this happens to are the Royal Knights, and they show up, and people go, but they're usually the good guys. What's I th- happening? I think that's why they're brought into Digimon. They're just kind of like a, but they're meant to be the good guys, and we can question what really is good. But what does that mean? Because we never ever see them being good yeah we i don't think we do like i've never seen royal knights do anything good like i get i think alphamon in x evolution technically was meant to be good but, probably but maybe? he wasn't part of like the royal knights the organization same as dukemon and uh omegamon <coughs> yeah but that's just like that that's just in different seasons yeah like, they're not part of the they royal knights happen like, to be royal knights but like their design and whatever but they're not part of the organization the royal knights who have always been evil in everything they show like, I'm up I'm pretty in. sure I've mentioned that Vimon has p- probably too many evolutions that are Royal Knights. How has, many does he have? It has Magnamon, it has All Force Vidramon, he has Impaldramon Paladin Mode so it's more than it obviously should be and it's just, I don't know, I just I feel like there's too many Vimon evolutions there It'd be really funny if all the Royal Knights devolved into three Vimon hanging out, that'd be cute Yeah, best friends. And also Doramon can come because Doramon's the best. In little versions of their armor. Yay, oh that's adorable actually Actually. And there's a Gilmon in one too. He's got like the big like the big shield and he's hiding behind the shield. <laughs> and he's chomping on some bread. We have like Ogamon and Gurumon who are like in like a you know that that horse costume that you have like two people. <laughs> <laughs> and Ogamon sorry, uh, Go- uh, Gabumon's the butt. Yeah. Uh, Digimon's great. <laughs> and then a Vimon goes up to, Wait, no. Yeah, a Vimon and a Wormon go up and try to hold them like a sword. Aww. Aww. <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. They're so much bigger. Vimon's basically just, like, inside Magnamon's head. What? I know. He's very, very small. Masaru and Akuto are running to get Kurata. Akuto says that they will end this chaos. In the dub, Kenan wants the fighting to stop because he wants peace in the digital world. The Gizmon are descending upon Eldoradimon because they can fly. Toma goes to a waterfall and Nanami's there. Nanami says that the waterfall is the weakness in his plan. Can, yep. can we establish that she's also standing on top of a tree for some reason? Yes, because she's a tree. Nanami calls him professor and in the dub she calls him general because she's likening this to a general in a fight. And I just found that was kind of interesting like because he's actually professor. Professor. No, he's not. He's a doctor. Yeah, but the word's the same, I'm pretty sure. No, it's not. The word's the same that she uses in the in the Japanese oh, version? Oh, is, well, isn't he a medical doctor? Is, yes. Are those the same? No, I, th- I think it's the same one. I think she uses Isha. Oh, okay. Fair enough. Mm. Um, I'm... Okay, at this point in the episode, I was questioning why did she spend the time to get on top of the tree instead of blowing up the dam? We will later find out, and this is why I think this episode is actually reasonably good, we will later find out there is a good character reason why she doesn't do that, and it's interesting. Good job, guys. You wrote something worth watching. But that's good, though. My, my standards are really low I know, now. but at least, you know, at least it's good when it happens, right? Okay, but I have a more, I have a more important question, which uh, is more unfortunate, I guess. Nanami is able to read Garmon's moves, so she kicks him. So what I was saying is that Nanami identifies that this is the key part of Thomas's strategy, yep. is to defend this dam. Yep. So she came here to head, head him off. If this was the key part of his strategy, why did he come alone? I'm not sure. 
Like that's that's my problem with this. And they could have explained it. And there were ways to explain it where he says, I'm gonna go alone to not telegraph that this is really important. Maybe they haven't figured it out. Like yeah, no, that's fair. There are ways to do it, but I think that he didn't, and then it makes him look a bit dumb. Right. So then they get into the whole fight. Yeah. And she says that nothing that moves within Thomas' heart is left unseen. The Nami asks why he's fighting, and then Thomas says because they're his friends and it's what's right to do. In the dub, she asks explicitly why he's not on their side. So instead of saying, hey, why are you fighting? She's like, well, why aren't you on our side? Nami says that he's not some warrior of justice. In the dub, the word is defender of justice. Then Nami says that it just it's almost like, you know, Toma feels a sense of superiority from helping those who are weaker. And it, it, it does basically, he's doing everything for self-satisfaction. So what she's doing, she's implying that he's a god complex because she clearly has one. Yes. And so she's just projecting all of that onto him, which is really interesting. And also the way that Toma reacts to this news, it's almost like like he seems too defensive over it, almost like it's actually true. Because it's something that he it, it could be him, yeah. but he's just good enough a person that it isn't. But we know from the way he was introduced into the show that that's be- it's pretty much where he was at. Yes. And it's more or less like Masaru forcing him to accept friendship that like made him not that way. Yeah. Nanami says that she understands loneliness because Nanami's the same, because she's a genius and she's alone. Toma asks why she's supporting Karada, and then Nanami says that she doesn't remember siding with him, but she's just bored. In the dub, Nanami says that she's not on anyone's side, but she's just having fun. So this is sort of different between like, in the original she is on his, she's, she's not saying that she's not on his side, she's, she's on his side, she doesn't remember why or when or how she she joined him, but she knows that that's the side she's on, and she knows that she must have joined because she was bored of, of doing whatever she was doing. But in the dub, it's just like, I'm not on anyone's side, I'm just doing this, whatever, because it's fun. I would suggest that those that she uses different words, those are essentially the same position. They're similar, but I feel like they could be interpreted in different ways. They can, but I mean, like, even if you say you're on someone's side, if you're there because you're bored, like, if it would entertain you to do something else, then you will then do it. That means that she doesn't have loyalty. So that statement that she's on on a side is irrelevant it is just that her goal of entertaining herself aligns with um with Kurata's goal of yes. genocide which is pretty much exactly the same thing as what she says in the english which is she's on no one's side she's just here because it's the most entertaining thing about okay and no, i i don't really see that i still think that it's different enough like she's she's having fun being on Kurata's side as opposed to she's not actually on anyone's side she's just doing whatever is fun to her well i guess part of it identifies her as like teammates with the other two rather than just like people who are around and the original one it does seem like that she's teammates and she does have some loyalty to them even though she only has loyalty to them because she was bored and she doesn't know why she joined them she still has loyalty to them in the dub she just she doesn't really care it actually makes way more sense for her to not to say she's on no one's side because her whole point to Tama here is that he shouldn't be loyal to his friends yes well, that makes sense so the fact that she might be loyal to her side mm. implies that what she's saying is not necessarily true but just to just to get into his head, which is actually less interesting than her being completely honest about how she feels and, like, having the whole reflection in him. Right. She asked Toma to join her. Gizmon started exploding and killing Digimon off in off in, other, in another screen and Ivan's w- watching and he's laughing. You know what really bothers me? What? Those, those Egomon who, like, surprise attacks some of the Gizmon and blew them up. Yes. By hitting them in the back. Yep. And then, I think it's next episode, and I just want to say it now, the Gizmon go by and the Egomon hit them in the back with the exact same attack and it pings off them like it's not Nothing. Maybe they're different models. It's, no, it was the same model. Huh. It was the same model and it was like two hours beforehand. That's weird. And it was the same situation, hitting them in the same place. And the Gizmon just looked kind of annoyed the maybe, second maybe time. Maybe there'd been four to fights of that attack. It was two hours no, later. No, 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 I, I, I see your point. It, that is weird. That is weird. I, I didn't notice that. Nanami says there's no place for Thomas. Nanami calls him stubborn, and she says that evolution isn't special to him. And then she says something that's hyper bio extra evolution. Boom. She just adds extra to it. Boom. In the dub, it's hyper bio DNA full charge hyper bio digivolve. It is such a mouthful. I I kind of wish they'd gone like done the the Capcom like like super ultra edition. beta yeah super ultra alpha edition arcade EA plus yeah the uh, the Dead Rising three DLC That's, naming that was convention good time for, for matching service she becomes by Lotusmon and in the dub she gets given more clothing. Yeah, no, well, her snake bits get given more clothing. No, no, no. Even the, even no, the main thing? The I actual thing. She, um, she has 
kind of like a panty shot area, and she's but the frills are extended in the dub. <laughs> Sorry, I'm thinking. Okay, in our train stations here in Melbourne, we have something called a safety zone, yeah. which is this yellow blocked out bit on the ground with which I asked. I asked one of the security yeah, officers. They go, "It's in view oh, of it's, CCD- it's, CCTV. Yeah, it's in view, and it's more well lit usually. Yeah, so it's, it's just it's the safest stand, area yeah. of the of the train station. See, well, we're just and, told that if you are a feminine bodied person, you just get told those like, yeah, yeah you stand there. I like, okay, know. I stand there. So I aren't f- you lucky that you don't have to know that? <laughs> exactly. But I'm just imagining that like there's the design of Bio Lotus Mon there's this is big black and white like line area in a big square and it's called panty zone. That's no, that's weird. <laughs> And then we get a, also a few clips of her just jumping around with her with her jubblies moving. We get a lot of uh, jiggle physics just removed in the dub. I did notice the jiggle physics fairly strongly. I'm like, why did they animate this? Well, they, they clearly had a great time. My favourite one is at one point, I'm pretty sure they're both moving independently of them, of each other. There is a way you can move in one of the dead or alive volleyball games where if you move it in a perfect sequence, the, the boob physics not only moves independently of each other, but they go like all the way up and oh, all the way much. down. Like it's like this. No, that's weird. It's really bad. It's like one of those lucky cats, but with two arms. Oh, that's all. Going awful. differently. Maneki boobies. <laughs> she says that she's beyond ultimate now. She's fast, which is what I'm noticing is kind of like a theme in Digimon, where whenever you want to show a, like, a newly evolved Digimon being strong, they just say, oh, it's fast, and we have your dodging moves. And I feel like this is especially the case in Savers. I hope you're looking forward to Dragon Ball Z. Where that happens literally all the time. Maybe it's like a shonen thing. Like, oh, he's fast. He's just like, oh, this thing just, this bad guy just showed up for the first time and we're fighting it. And to show just how strong this bad guy is, we're going to have them be very fast. Well, if... if Is this a trope? Yes. Because I I just never noticed it until this episode. Dragon Ball Z is really bad with this trope where every time someone powers up, they very specifically teleport behind the person they're fighting and then punch them once and launch them to the ground. It's like every time. Awful. So she can also read Mirage Galgamon's moves, which is another thing about how to do a, how to do a bad guy in Digimon. It's just like she could do he's that fast, before. read moves. She could do that before. Yeah. The whole point was that she's smart enough that she can like anticipate what the. I think they could have done this slightly better, which is they say she can anticipate the optimal moves. That would be that would right. be the best thing to say yeah. here because she's so smart. And that's what Thomas is always doing. He's doing things the most optimal way. Yeah. I think that's really fat. That would have been it's a, a tiny bit more detail to make the scene make a bit more sense. Right. And then I noticed something. Yeah. For some reason, I didn't remember Biolotusmon being this large. I thought that she was maybe the size of Rosemon. She's just, she's as big as Mirage Galgamon, and Mirage Galgamon's quite big. Yeah, she's real big. However, Mirage Galgamon has also changed in size significantly, I think. Like, before he was maybe twice as big as a house, and now he's maybe twice as big as Toma. But they changed size... Okay, what, what about... How big like, is Atlas um, Kabuterimon? Like, on. no, okay. How, how big my, is he? My, my issue is, I feel like Digimon doesn't have consistent sizes oh, with a lot of their Digimon. Never do they. How big is Greymon? No one knows. I feel like in Pokemon, like, a character will always stay the same size, and a, if there's a species, we have small ones and we have big ones, but more or less the main ones that we see will be like the same size i tend to think so yes i feel like the child level digimon are fine in digimon yeah but as soon as they evolve past that it's just like oh how big are we today we're bigger than a house all right we was big as a person today look even argumon in this show keeps changing size no that's just between seasons no in this in this season he will change size consistently does he i just thought oh maybe sometimes he's like up to masaru's hip and then sometimes he's masaru's size it's like it's weird right no no okay no i think i know what you mean yeah Maybe it does happen. But the thing is, Mirage Galgamon and Alakabuterimon both have that in common where they're just... The dr- artists can't actually work out l- how big they are sh- and should be for each episode, so they just kind of wing it. Then we get some weird, like, succubus thing going on where Nanami, like, brings out some snakes the and snake is a snake. snake demons. And they gave, they gave the snakes clothes in the dub. So I'm thinking this must have been one of the most expensive English versions that they've ever done. Oh, they do a lot of Because they had to hire animators. Because, like, there's a difference between, like, oh, in this one shot we put a towel on the girl who stands still the whole time. In this, they have to move, they have to put this, like, clothing on every frame. Yeah, it's a little bit more than just removing some Japanese that's in the background of a screen. We're putting squiggles there in Microsoft oh, that was awful. Paint. That, that wasn't, I don't even think an animator did that. I think just random did it. It was Jeff Nimoy himself. Yeah. It really could have been. been. That was Brian Beacock because he was playing Ogamon. He was like, eh. <laughs> so yeah, they, they edited, they, because the snakes are very kind of like sexual looking. Yeah. Like this is topless. a very, this is a very sexual scene for a, a kid show. I mean, 
you can you understand what they're going for, right? Oh, like yes. she represents temptation and it's a whole thing and the forbidden fruit even you're at there's like there's literally like Adam and Eve stuff you could pull out of this if you really yes. wanted to. But the whole point of it is like the join us, you're one of us, blah blah blah. And Tom is like, No, my my friends Also it's quite horrifying. I mean, it's pretty it's I mean, look, 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 that there's enough there's enough going on that you'd be like, Yeah, no, this is cool. I'm on board. <laughs> Well, it's it's yeah, no, it's scary. It's only horrifying when they do the face, you know. The oh face. yeah, the face, the face of despair. Ooh, the face. The dang and romper face. <laughs> the oh no, you've caught me, and I'm the murderer face. Yeah, it, essentially yes. Nanami says they can become gods together in the dub, and I found that this was a really weird thing to say because the dub has never referenced religion or gods before. I mean, to be fair, we can become gods is not a religious statement. Oh, yeah. I know, but it's a religious reference. I'm not sure. It's, it's not. Like, in okay. what religion can you become a god? Yeah, you're right. You, I kind of see your point. But in the original, she's just saying, you know, oh, we can join forces and we can be the best. We can be, like, beyond human. Which is, like, more or less the same, I guess. Mirage Gargamon snaps Tom out of it and says that Tom should start instructing his movements. And then Bylos wants still fast. And Tom is, using, like, looking up all these moves in the computer. And this is kind of, like, reminding me a bit of V-Tamer, this part of the scene. I, lit- like, literally have written down, this is V-Tamer. Because you know what this is? This is exactly... Exactly the Sigma fight. Yeah. It's, I'll give you orders and the person anticipates the orders and we'll see what happens. But the only difference is that rather than like intercepting what was written down, whatever it was. Yeah. It was that she was just reading it as the optimal moves. And then like... It was like the same solution too. Which no, no, it wasn't. It wasn't. It wasn't an abuse of the reading of the moves. Yeah. But it sort of was. Rather, it was like okay. So she's reading all the smart moves I would make. Well, let's not do something smart then. The only problem with this strategy is that running straight through an attack should just kill you. Also, my my main problem is that why Toma does not need to be on the shoulder. That was pretty funny. Like there is no reason that he should be there. It didn't. He could- no. It's because he's channeling. Uh, he's channeling master that's literally why yes but it just, i know it, in the english they say why are you up there that's dumb i know but i'm just talking about in the original version it just it's strange like i, I know it's like only thematic he's channeling masaru and not being himself but it is like it's stupid he could he should die he you know should how die i would justify this. that what like galgamon wouldn't have been able to push through that last fight last like blast thing if it wasn't for like the direct power of friendship injected oh. directly into his neck oh the like, anime. like he knows is right there so he like puts in the extra five percent and then mm. makes it so then you know that he's able to come close enough to attack and she Nanami, just doesn't get out of the way then i effectively die like she, when she's we see her being she's alive defeat head. but she has a digi egg next to her so i just thought oh does she actually just die really? i I somehow missed the egg. Both, both Ivan times. and Nanami have their digi egg next to them. So are you telling me they got the Digimon knocked out of them? Yes. Like I just didn't notice that. Yeah, and that's why the his her staff is destroyed because the Digimon part of her dies. That's dumb. They yeah, they got the, she got the digi knocked out of her. <laughs> that's really I whoa. <laughs> right out of her. Imagine like it's kind of like when the spirits came out in Frontier. I, I mean, I guess, I guess, but you had to like, you, but you had to like take those away. Yes. No, this just, it just spurted out of her. Same with Ivan. <laughs> I like, I know it's giving forward a little bit, but I love that she like completely wrecks Tomo with that line at the end. But I didn't lose to you. I lost to Masaru strategy. Yeah, it's like, and, w- well done. You're in, hang, hang, she's like, in, hang on, in my dying breath, I have to be sassy. But it's a callback to the beginning of the episode where everyone's like, yeah, Masaru's strategy is the best, but it wasn't his strategy. Yeah. It was Thomas. And now it actually it's was. literally that. It was Masaru's oh, strategy, I, I but Thomas that. did that, it. That's cute. It's really, it's really clever. So the waterfall ends up getting destroyed because Bylosmon had a staff in it for some reason. Also, the story has to progress. I guess. Yeah, also the story has to progress and they couldn't just have Tom lose. Karada is noticing this and he's like, oh well, she died. Koki, I guess it's your turn. But it's Koki. not, apparently. And then we see Tom holding the Nami and this is when she says, oh yeah, I, I'm not sad because I didn't actually lose to your power. <gasps> it's so me! It's so like... It's what what's the word for this? It's so petty. That's it. It's, yeah, it's really so petty. petty. You you didn't win. You like I lost, but you didn't win. Yeah. Uh. And then Toma basically says, "It seems I'm full of rage." He actually says, "It seems I'm irritated." <laughs> it seems which, that I'm I'm really really mad. It just it's I just found like it was a weird thing to say. Mm-mm. For some reason, I'm irritated. Dagamon, fetch my gun. <laughs> In the dub, he's just kind of confused, which makes less sense. 
And then we get the next time on. And I just, I just want to say this now because I'm really upset with the next time on. Because the next time on spoils the ep- end of the, the, the next episode because that's just all. the portal? They literally just show, oh no, a time oscillation bomb. What's going to happen with that? Oh no, Alderati Mon's going to the time oscillation bomb. Because they didn't want to show that Yoshino had an episode. Well, that wouldn't have made the little kids watching want to actually see it. Because we didn't want to see the Dragon Ball slash Sailor Moon fight that was going on the next episode. No, we had yeah. to... It's just, not Dragon Ball. That's just a dragon. I'm not... And this is just in the dub, by the way, the, the next time on. The original one actually shows the next time on that's legitimate. But no, did, um, did you watch the next time on in the dub? No. Because it was, as I just said, it was just like, hey, look, it's a, ti- it's a time oscillation bomb. What's that doing there? Eldoradimon's falling through the portal. What's a time oscillation bomb? It's the bomb that they use to, that creates a portal. What's what's a portal? Go away. Do you want to watch the show? <laughs> What do you think of this episode as someone who was new to Digimon? I thought it was probably one of the best ones of this season. See, I, I also liked it. I mean, like, for some reason, like, I'll, I guess I'll talk about my rating now. I think mm-hmm. I'd go it a seven, but actually talking about it, I think I want to give it an eight. I think I do too. And you know, because I didn't actually realize that the ending was a callback to the beginning. Because the beginning's so frustrating. I thought it was just like, oh, okay, things move along. But like the, it is a big circle and it all, it all thematically ties together. And I didn't realize that until we were talking about and it. And you kind of understand why... Tom looks a bit upset and angry and doesn't want to go back to the side. I am irritated. He's like, it seems I'm full of rage. <laughs> so no, th- 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 this was this was quite a good episode, and I don't know why I just gave it a seven in my rating. I just it 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 also it's also good that and I mentioned this obnoxious synopsis and I mention it constantly. I like it when they don't pair the two token girls up against each other. Like they don't have like it. We're not having like oh a woman's fight about being who is the hottest. Like Nanami never said <laughs> every season. Like Nanami never went up and said, "Oh, I'm worried that Yoshino is hotter than me." That that is not one of her concerns because she doesn't care. Like, and she never her thing wasn't, "Oh, you're more stylish than me." It was never like about beauty. She was never in competition with the girl. They had a fight, but it was like a one second fight of being beaten by the new evolution. And you still got mad at that? No, I'm just saying it. It was it was strange, but I knew that this was coming up, so I was I was fine. And it's just it's really nice to see characters not like the women not fighting over who's hotter, and the women not being forced to fight each other. It is a nice thing to see. Look, if you wanted good role models, you would. Would, like you just would have made the better decision. It just it it's good. It's it's a lot better than Frontier so far, which is good, right? Well, obviously, yes. Being better than a bad show is in fact good. And how did it prepa- compare to your predictions that you made in Obnoxious Synopsis? I remember, like, I thought I'd be really annoyed that they didn't foreshadow well that she was like a big genius and everything. I think you predicted that it was a good episode, though. I did, and you know what? I was I was right, and actually, the next one is also pretty good. So I was kind of wrong in the next one to an extent. Yeah, we'll talk about that when we get to it. Um, but, but I think you did you give it like a seven for me? I did, yeah. So it even it surpassed your you and you said positive. You said wrong. I think your words were wrongfully positive or something along the lines of that. that? What do you mean wrongfully positive? I, know, I don't you, even know what you mean. You were kind of like doubtful. You're like, I'm gonna give a seven but i don't think it's actually gonna get a seven like you're pretty like pessimistic about oh, right. it. it was a pessimistic pos- positiveness so like but i did say the arc of like just beating the bio frontier kids was on and it, like it is like they're this is the end of them as we go along. but they're not like they're not doing two episodes and i think you thought that it would be like a two episode ordeal not in this one next one i thought might be yeah yeah but the, the, i was the, wrong about next episode but the good thing is like i think that and i guess we'll, we'll say it now i think that both episodes were sufficient in being the fight episode like I felt like I didn't want more of the fight I saw as much of the fight as I want I saw the stakes I saw bits of their character I saw that Ivan had character I saw that Nanami had character and her motivation was just like I was bored and I'm really smart I tended to think that the stakes as you put them were really good in this one the dam is important for reasons that aren't yeah. perfect, but we could have made them good. Yeah. Um. And but in the next one, they try to put the stakes in there, and they say if we beat Ivan, then the Gizmon will be leaderless, and that will make them bad. But that doesn't make any sense. The Gizmon worked just fine. And also, we saw stakes for Ivan. We saw why Ivan was doing it. But I guess we'll, no, no, no I don't mean the, their backstories. Yeah. I mean the stakes of the fight. Yes. What is the re- what does the outcome of the fight mean? Because they just kind of wandered 
already into each other. And if they hadn't, I don't think the results of the battle would have been any different. And both episodes have strategy. Like, they have actual strategy in uh, Digimon. I wouldn't call it... I don't think the next one does. The next one. The, the next one's strategy is the fight. She's saying, look, I know we don't want to fight him, but we have to fight him to weaken the Gizmon because they, they offered a proper with leader. That is that's strat- not what a strategy that is. is. That, that is a strategy. No, I mean, that's a reason it's tra- be, to It's being fight. strategic. I, I mean, like, a strategy within the fight, right? No, no. I meant, like, in general, like, a strategy in an episode. I mean, yeah, okay. There is a reason. Yeah. Yes. And I, I, I liked it. Anyway, I guess we'll get we'll get to that shortly, I guess. What was the major difference you noticed? The, My- the additional animation to put on the clothes. Like, it's it seems mm. pretty clear to me. Well, that, that does take a lot of work. But mine's just, like, I feel like Masara was being, like genuine in the original version like i feel like he never really took ownership of all any of the plans he was just saying look i'm doing this because my father protect this place so i will too my because dad my was job. so cool Toma, wasn't my dad really cool but no, is the, he cooler than your dad no the animation cool the animation bit, bit is uh it, that, that that's a big thing the start of episode 32 has Shine Greymon and Gizmon fighting. Akuta calls them over to, and t- to see how the waterfall is broken and it's drained and it's left Alderadimon open. Despite, yeah, I guess he was open already. Like, what? Like, they've been flying there the whole time. Didn't they crash a Gizmon into, like, one of the towers already? I think so. And also, why did the Gizmon fly forward at it? Wouldn't it make way more sense to come from above? That's a good point. Because then you would cross all the distance in which they could shoot at you by being, like, really high up in the air. And then you could descend upon it, which would be faster and way harder for them to defend against. Mm. I'm just saying their battle commanders are trash. Mm. Masaru says how he trusts Toma, and he says he doesn't need to go back to check on it because Toma's in charge of that, and he'll just leave him to it. In the dub, Marcus is basically saying the same thing, which I thought was strange because it's a different personality that he had in the last episode in the dub where he was basically just like i'm gonna charge forward and he never says anything about toma it's been a week since we localized the show so we forgot that we did that yeah we we made marcus awful in the dub last week so we're gonna make him reasonable today they're not about consistency they're about changing the episode to what it feels like it needs right ivan is there with some gizmon and yoshima says they have to keep the babies in the palace so we can be prepared to fight because everyone else is losing hope they're like how do we how do we win this and yoshima's like we will we can still win this. In the dub, it's the same, but for some reason, Yoshima says smaller Digimon, not babies, which is weird considering... The Egomon are small. And Piximon. <laughs> Piximon are smaller than Egomon, and they are perfect levels, but they are small. So I would count them as smaller Digimon. So I think babies is a better term, but I don't think we actually see any baby babies, Digimon. Babies. 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 Emails. Yoshima evolves Kamimon to Guapamon, which is like, I just love him evolving because he goes from this shy little turtle to like this, like, Guapamon, yeah. It's so cute. I love him. I really want the chief to ask Master, hey, how do I make my guy turn to an ultimate? <laughs> he goes, okay, all right. So you got to get really angry. And you got to punch and then, some things. And then Master punches Guapamon in the face. Aww. And then that the anger from that makes him evolve. Huh? It was the power of friendship all along, but you have to unlock it through punching. That's what Digimon's all about. I mean, Savers does do quite well with the power of friendship because it's like the power of friendship is just punching your bad guy really hard and making your friend evolve, right? That That's the power of friendship? Obviously. Lalamon is shooting nuts out a window, which is weird because I feel like, wouldn't you evolve to try to be a better defensive system? I'm not sure. Well, Yoshi wasn't around, I guess. Yoshino then runs past with a barrel and throws it to Gizmon, which is a pretty cool moment. And then he, like, kills it? Yeah. How? Like, it's a barrel! It's a Bingham's barrel. Also, this is a really cool moment. And then in the dub, they put, like, this stupid, like, wacky shenanigans music. <laughs> and I think it's because she falls out the window afterwards. And well, you don't want it to be like, oh, she almost died. Yeah, I don't know why they made this, like, this kind of like serious like she's risking her life she's throwing a barrel she's being extremely brave she almost dies into this like wacky character moment because it's it weird. is a comedy moment where like Lalamon catches by the jacket and the jacket comes off yeah and then she has to catch her like that's a comedy moment now, then Ivan is there and he calls Yoshino his beloved honey and this is really like honey the way he <laughs> talks to her is really creepy and I, I get that's the point and it's like she kept on saying no I'm not interested and and he's just like but you but you will be and I will fight for that and it's, I feel like it's way creepier in English I, th- I I feel like the ending is different. I feel like it's more or less the same in both versions. Do, okay, in the Japanese, can you confirm one way or the other? When he's doing like the final couple of attacks, I thought he said like, I will make you realize you love me. Whereas in the English, it was like, 
what? You don't love me? Well, then die. I didn't get that. I, th- I thought it was like, I will make you love me in both versions. Like- no, in the second one, for sure, oh, in, a, in the second attack, he's like, really, you're rejecting me? Well, then I'm going to like beat you. Oh, okay, maybe I missed that then. No, that that is... Okay, I, I mean, we can look mm. at it again, because I, I feel like that's what happened. No, 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 no now, now I think about it. I think you, I think you might be right. Because that's, by the way, foreshadowing, that's my biggest difference with this episode, because it's so scary. Mm. It's like, well, okay, I'll kill you then. Yeah, you know, I, I, I see. I know, I, I do remember that now. He said... That he loves her, but he would never say it out loud. In the dub, he keeps on saying "honey bun." Oh my god, this is this is one of my favorite bits. Yeah, but but you are saying it out loud. What? Oh, you so you could hear everything I was thinking then? And he's saying how? Oh, but you heard all my passionate feelings. All That's my passionate really feelings have been heard. <laughs> and he's so embarrassed, and it's so funny. So this like confirmed he really didn't know every single time Nanami said, "But we could hear you." Like he couldn't figure it out because he wasn't paying attention. Mm. In the dub, she says how she would never like a guy who keeps saying everything that comes up to his head out loud. And this is when he gets embarrassed. In the original, when you know when he's being embarrassed, he's kind of like, oh, well, darn it, now I have no choice. And he's referring to the fact that he has to fight her. Well, I thought he was going to confess his love. <laughs> Oh, okay. I, I guess that could be that bit too. Of me, bit of it's me. both. He's going to do both. In the dub, he says maybe she's just playing hard to get. Isn't he creepy though? It's so creepy. He's way creepier in the dub, I think. Yeah, I know. I, I see yeah, with, with the whole death thing. Yeah. Well, no, like it's it's not like it's not okay. Okay, well, I should just try a little bit harder. It's, oh, you're resisting me because you want me to try harder, huh? Yeah. No, that is, and I feel like. I think that Ivan is well written that way that he's cre- like it's in the Japanese creepy. he's delusional. Yes. Whereas in the English he crosses the line. I think that's the difference. Also, like I'm not sure. I'll, I feel like it's if it was done nowadays he'd he'd make references to the friend zone and saying, "Look, I deserve this. Oh my I'm being God, so nice to he you." Would. Oh my God! Like uh, he's the kind the kind of guy who'd be like, "But I wasn't horrible to you that one time." I deserve you. Do you. Remember that one fight where I didn't punch you and you were fighting an army and said, I could have sneak attacked you, but I didn't. Yeah, he's just saying, I wasn't awful. You should love me. And I feel like that's effectively like more or less what, what he would be doing now. He'd be like the nice guy of like, hey, I did something nice to you. I keep on calling you honey bun. That's such a nice thing to call you. I could be calling you rat face. <laughs> wow, what a romantic. Yeah, I just, I feel like it's in that sort of way. Like, you know, the creepy guy thinks he deserves the girl, thinks that the, gir- the girls are like made to love him. I don't know. It's... Mm, it's really creepy, but I think it's like, it's it's creepy. It's really creepy, but I feel like it's not badly written, but it's still so creepy, and I think that's why it's well written. That does that make any sense? Yes. Good. I'm glad. Should we talk about his special attack? Oh, what the? I want to walk hand in hand with the, in, on the beach with you. Yes, and the I want to sip uh, milkshakes out, out of uh, two straws attack. Yeah, just I'm not sure why, but this seems like an Atmon thing, and I don't. I, was this done in Atmon? No, it wasn't. As far as I'm aware, it just, it just seems really familiar. No, like this is this is the first time I think I've seen this. So and it's, it's a, good. A bit before all these different attacks, Lalamon says that they will fight, and if she wins, she's not. He's not allowed to go near Yoshino ever again. And then she says how once you see my evolved form, you're going to pass out from a nosebleed. Because Thanks. she's she's sick of she. In the dub, she says, you won't be able to date anybody for a long time. Because she's, she's going to kill him, basically. I thought she was going to rip his balls off. That too. So this is when Yoshino says, hey, what are you doing? Lalamon says, look, if we fight him, the Gizmon will be without a leader. And she's like, oh yeah, that's As smart. As if that should make any difference at all. Because Kurata can control them remote, remotely. <laughs> remotely. <laughs> Ivan extra evolves and he becomes Biospinomon, who is just a dinosaur. I like him. He's a dinosaur friend. And I just noticed that I'm not sure if the Biolotusmon was this disturbing, but the way they animated like his body changing and being warped is kind of disturbing. Yeah, it wasn't nearly that bad on the actual evolution itself. Although, if you remember, lots of snake demons. Yeah, and that part was, but the evolution itself for Biolotusmon, I guess because she was humanoid and yes. she could just stretch and become purple. Correct. In this, it's just basically like, his body is changing and he looks in pain. You know what the problem here is? Mm. He keeps a human head for way too long and it's like the last thing to change. I think that's why it's disturbing. Because what, what you're meant to do for this evolution to make it not so weird is yeah. give him the snout and like make it grow out like a werewolf mm. like early mm. and then it will change along with the rest of him but in this case it was like he just got big and he got a big dinosaur body and his human head was on an increasingly long stretchy neck and mm. it was just really gross and that's probably why it was so disturbing Yoshino says that his power is fake because it's from a karate by Spinamon says that Yoshino is cold because she's only scared of her love for him and he's going to convince her with the love of, of the love that they have with all these attacks
text, but it's just like walking arm in arm throughout the city and I want to go boating together in the park's pond and I want to share a juice drink with two straws. And it's really so creepy. The attacks are funny. Yeah, it's funny, but it's also like, it's really creepy and it gave me some sort of like, ick reaction because it's like, ew, man, like this is gross. It's just, uh, it's creepy. And in the dub, it's more or less the same, except I felt like it was a little bit sillier. And that's like, I guess you can say that for basically everything that happened in the dub. Like, oh, it was the same, but it was a bit silly. I guess to make it less icky. I just noticed I wasn't having like the same ick, ick reaction in the dub. So Rosemond's really weird here. Yeah, it seems like she's in love with Yoshino. And I can't, I'm, I'm, I'm yeah. kind of okay with that. Like, I feel like if you are destined to be with this Digimon, like whatever becomes romantic, like Dokumon and Eri, like clearly had like, they clearly, Dokumon did love Eri and Eri was jealous when Dokumon had a crush on, on a different Atmon. That was weird. But honestly, like this is probably slightly weirder because yeah okay it's it's a fun thing to imagine because Rosemond's like you know a, 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 like a human person but Lalamon's not yeah and they're the same thing and they spend most of their time as Lalamon which is a big floating plant pillow I feel like she has diff- a different personality as Lalamon she does Rosemond it's, mainly it's because of this episode like, what's the evidence for that I know Rosemond seems like very much like Lalamon would make fun of Yoshino like she'd say oh yes but she's so lazy and she sleeps and she you know she, she's telling the secrets to the other chosen children and their digimon she could totally have done the same thing here right though yeah i guess Cause she's just not around she's not around a friend so like she wouldn't make fun of her outwardly in this circumstance so I- this is the part where rosemond says i'll never hand yoshino over to you in the dub rosemond's kind of being sassy because yoshino says she doesn't want to go to the mall she with, said um, smoothies your, are good with ivan and, and she's like oh no but you can get some really nice smoothie there and then she goes Smo- yeah smoothies are good Urgh. like why does like she glare weird, after it's saying really smoothies weird. Are great. and i i think maybe they wanted to remove like the possible romantic implication between rosemond and yoshino maybe which is actually fa- fair enough considering how old yoshi's what age She's 18. Oh, then that's, I guess it's okay. Yeah, well, Lalamon is, like, an adult woman. Yeah, well, Rosemont is. Yeah, I meant, I meant Rosemont at the moment, yes. And then Yoshino says it's a silly fight, because they're just, like, Rosemont and Ivan are just glaring at it each other. It is a silly fight. Instead of just being silenced, because they're glaring at each other. Toma is carrying Nanami, and Galmon asks if he's going to help Masaru. Toma remembers what Nanami said to him, and he says, look, Mas- Masaru will be fine. So let's just go back to Yoshima. In the dub, what I noticed was we get the flashback of what the biting final words that Nanami said to Tom in the last episode, which was, I lost to Masaru's pa- power, not yours. And the weird thing I noticed is that they're actually using the line from the Japanese version instead of what they just use in the flashback. So they, re- they re-dubbed this scene and they translated it differently. I think... I am irritated. I, 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 it seems I'm full of rage. <laughs> it seems I'm full of unadulterated, r- complete and utter rage. Yoshino gets distracted by a Tanemon and Rosemon gets attacked. What, what, what is this thing? The what Tanemon? is this weird Digimon I've never seen before? Oh, Yasimon. He was in um, the Frontier movie. What was he? Uh-huh, he was one of the humans. It's so weird. I think he was one of the major ones for memory. I thought it was like a plot important thing that oh, ha- no. was happening um, here. No, 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 not in Frontier movie. I mean, right now. No, Yazimon is uh, Vimon with the Digimental of Sincerity. It doesn't matter. Slash purity. That so doesn't matter. I love him. He's but like, he shows up and he's so such a weird, peculiar design. And it's just at the point where Yoshi's losing. I thought like... Okay, so she's going to have been losing the fight, and then this thing will come and save her, and there'll be, like, a plot thing that happens. No, this thing just gets instantly murdered. Look, I'm fine with that, because it's better than Yazimon showing up and rescuing her. I'm not saying it's bad. Yeah. Sorry, I'm not saying that's what would have been better. I'm saying that's what I thought would happen. Okay, so it is just there for the sake of, we need to get Yoshino really, really mad. Yeah, and we need to show, like, Ivan's character. We need to show that Ivan... Clearly. He's just going to kill me. He's just going to... He doesn't care about not killing these because he's been... To, this is business. And he, he, that's why he says it's business. I guess what's important is that the second half of the fight can't continue to be about, haha, isn't it funny that she doesn't want to date this guy? Yeah. Because it has to develop further on. It, it's fascinating to me that this is the case because this is really well done. It's almost like they've got new writers for these two episodes because these are really tightly done little stories that are really great. And the thing is that is good is they don't all focus on Masaru. 
And they don't all linger on this stuff. All this other stuff is happening during the episode as well. I think that's, so, that's what we always said with the best episodes of Digimon, is that we have, like, one, the main thing happening, but we also have, like, other things happening in the background. Yeah. So why do all the other episodes before this one, like, the last ten, why do they all suck? Maybe they, maybe it's different writers. Maybe these writers are good. Like, I'd be interested to know if they change writers at this point. I'm pretty sure they change writers in each episode. What? A lot of shows do that. They have different writers for each episode. I thought, I mean, they have a team of writers sometimes where, like, I think they have, rotate. like, a lead writer. We, we can look it up after, but they they might have had different writers, and that is very possible. Okay. We're going to see a list of episodes that the writers have written, and we'll see what's good and what's bad. It, it'd be funny if, like, at this point, we could accurately predict, okay, these are the good episodes, these are the bad ones. Oh, okay. That's actually a really good idea from Nox Synopsis, if I could come in with a list... Okay, so this person also did this episode, this episode, and this episode. Do you think it'll be good? So that's actually better than, that's... hey, hey, just random stab in the dark. Do you think it'll be good? We'll base it on their past work. You know what? Yeah, if, you, if you're if you willing to put that together. I'll do it. I'll, yeah. I mean, that's worth a shot. I mean, I'll probably forget about it. But hey, that sounds like a good idea. <laughs> You'll have to listen to us to have this conversation again. I mean, I'll be so... editing it. So, yes. I mean, presumably there is a lead writer in each episode. I'm just, I, I'm 90% sure that's right. But no, that, that's like an interesting thing. Like, what if these writers are just superior? What if they also wrote Flower Power and playing games? It's a lot of years between the two. It's unlikely. I don't know. They might have kept their writers. In any case, it, it's good. This is a good episode. So Yoshino's getting upset upset because he killed the, the Yazimon. And Ivan says, look, it's business. And I'm being paid for it. In the dub, there's no reference to the money at the moment. Yoshino says the Digimon are friends and wonders... Why he's not ha- like Ivan? Why are you having doubts about killing Digimon because they're our friends? Rosemont said that he's sold his heart to Karada, and how somebody who's given a heart has no reason to speak for love. In the dub, this is when Ivan says that he needs the money. And what I noticed that in the dub, and I'm not sure this was the same in the original version because I'm not a- able to pick up tone that well in Japanese yet. Yeah. But he seemed almost like upset about it he was like look I needed to do it like he sounded like he was almost I don't know sympathetic is that the right word. He was like, look, it's it was business. I need the money. I had to do it. And he didn't seem like he was... It was like the sort of a bit of a character change between, yes, I, it, I, will ki- I will kill and fight for our love and I will kill everyone. It was sort of like more of a, I had to do this. Yeah, I don't, I don't recall either way. I know. It was this sort of nice thing in the dub. Ivan attacks and Rosemont is hurt and tells Yoshino to run. Yoshino doesn't want to lose, and they do a big Dragon Ball move, which is so cool. It is. They just... fire at each other, and you know, they're... Yoshino's holding on to Rosemon, and Rosemon's doing her attack, and it's like this big beam. It is so cool. I feel like the, like this is this is a Dragon Ball thing. Like this is straight up a uh, like the big laser battle. This happens all the time. I love it. It is so, and the fact that we have the two girls doing this. We have Yoshino and her female partner, who is rather female looking. She is a flower, and and she's Ooh, feminine and she's doing something really strong and she's beating this huge hulking man and that's another thing i like they didn't just put you know maybe i mean he's a dragon yoshino against this a small a small young boy or maybe like a, a skinny weak boy they put her against someone who's like looks like he's got the body of a bodybuilder right like they put her yes. against like an actual strong looking opponent against someone who becomes a dinosaur and that's terrifying and i like that then yoshino says that she won't let ivan kill anybody else anymore in the dub, she says that she wants to get rid of his kind so that no one else will be able to suffer. Yo, we need a counter genocide. Woof. Yikes. <laughs> Yikes. We then see Masaru and Akuto show up at Karada's camp, and Koki beats Masaru up. We see that Ivan has a photo of him and his siblings Should in his we pocket. Should talk about how he punches Almon? No, th- I think that was, was that this part. Oh yeah, yeah it was. So Almon goes and attacks Kurata, yeah. and like just before he can make it, Koki just like whaps him out of the air. That's not very nice, is it? <laughs> it's really funny. Yeah, no, no, I, yeah, no, that was a part. And as I was saying, Ivan has a photo of him with his siblings in his pocket, and it sort of explained this. This is why this is why he needed the money. He he was trying to take care of his siblings. He's got like ten. Yeah, and Yoshino says that he was dumb and that she can't forgive Karada for doing this. So she's not blaming Ivan. She's just like, Ivan had motivation for doing this and clearly he had to and it was Karada's fault for taking advantage of that. Because the idea here is that she goes, like, don't you have a heart, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. And he goes, well, it's just business. And it, it's it's not that he doesn't have a heart. It's just that his heart has priorities. Yeah, and and all of a sudden she goes, I understand His priorities that. are family. In the dub, Yoshi says all this, but she adds on that Ivan doesn't think he's done anything wrong. Which is... It, which is it, that's not true. It, I think that Ivan knows that he's done wrong, but he also knows it's business. 
and he knows that he needs the money and he knows that he has siblings. It's true. It's He knows he's doing something wrong, but he doesn't care enough to stop. Yeah. And I thought that they were trying to imply that with making him seem sad about it in the dub. But which is also, which is good. Yeah. But then they have this line. I was kind of like, what? Then Thomas sees that Karada's cr- troops have planted a time oscillation bomb. It's like which, 25 seconds and this, left now. And this is where the, uh, the, re- the next time on from the last episode decides to put play. Like, oh, this is where the episode starts. Also, like, everything from this point on is like kind of nonsense everything this point on was like just it's chaotic no it is it is a lot happening no but i mean like the plan to move el doradimon doesn't make sense to me Mm. i can't see what advantage this gives kurata at all look i'm confused because i thought his plan was to destroy el doradimon and eat his data or something (laughs) hey man he's a really important i mean i thought that too yeah but i just realized if to if to remove el doradimon's defenses they had to drain the water why would you teleport him back into water? Yeah, no, that's a point. That's stupid. That's really stupid. <laughs> the, the rest of the episodes, the, the episode's still good, though. Yeah, no, it's all fine. That's just a flaw. I just don't get it. Oh, yeah, and then, okay, so then um, they fly around Yadagaramon to, into the portal with him. That's, and Koki that's punches, punches Yadagaramon, I'm pretty sure, I think. No, no, he gets, they get saved. Oh, yeah, Yadagaramon yeah. picks them up before Koki can beat them up. Yeah. Oh, no, no, yeah, no, my notes has jumbled up. So I was just noticing there was this weirdly censored part where Koki punches Falcomon, but that was in the last yeah. one. So that was in the dub. Karada launches the bomb and it sucks in Eldoradimon and Digital Gate. And Tom is just watching overhead and Yadigaramon surrounded by Gizmon and Rosemon and Yoshino are being, you know, sunk in to the portal with, uh, with Eldoradimon and Tom is just staying there, not caring, not helping. Yadigaramon plunges through and Masara is looking very dizzy and Eldoradimon lands in the human world. For, like, no reason. In the middle of the water. I, th- I can't. For no reason. I-, I feel like allowing all the humans to see what he's doing is, like, the only reason his plan would work is because no one knows what he's doing in the digital world. But now he's just going to show everyone. Maybe he's just a big show off. I'm not sure. Like, <laughs> we'll have to find out in the next episode what he says his plan is. But this is what I'm, like, he's... Everything he does is weird. I don't remember. And I I mean, it, it is the essence of a good villain that you like, you kind of get what they're doing. Like, you understand at least the reason for their actions, if not, like, the exact details of it. I mean, at this point, I'm much more interested in Ivan and Nanami as characters rather yeah. than Karada. I know I've been defending Karada. I hope Nanami but becomes a good guy. I don't remember. Not that she'll have a Digimon anymore because they beat it out of her. But... Yeah, she kind of, like, died. But it would be nice to have, like, characters who could become Digimon, like, in addition. Like, it would be kind of like Frontier, but they're friends. I don't know. Frontier. Be- Frontier. Digimon Frontier. What do you think of this episode as someone who was new to Digimon? Look, it, it was... The the Yoshi stuff was fun. I think everything else in it was boring. But, like, and, and I thought, like, the fight sort of went nowhere. And I, I got really frustrated when the Egomon threw the exact same we- attack. Yeah, I didn't even It hit the that. exact same way and had no effect for some reason. Maybe the water powered up the ninjas. I don't know. Maybe maybe ninjas are strong against water. The maybe, fact that maybe you that even try to agree. Maybe. No, mm, I'm, I'm joking. It's frustrating. I'm joking. Uh, so, yeah, like, otherwise, I, I enjoyed that fight, though. And that fight was great. And everything sort of about it, I really I had a lot of fun I with. I liked the whole, like, Dragon Ball part of it. The, the big ball of attack that you have to push up against and have the power of friendship. And I also liked that you kind of don't end up... You you hate Ivan during the fight because he's saying all these icky things and then he kills a Digimon in cold blood and he's just like, I don't care. And he just doesn't seem to care at all. So you hate him. And then they give you a reason not to hate him. And it just... It's such a simple, like, easy way of writing to make a character go from this is an awful character to you kind of understand. And it was it's just so easy. It's just like, it's one minute. And it's just this, this showing us of a photo that goes from this character is awful and I hate him and he's got, like, he's icky and he doesn't care and he hates, he's just going to kill Digimon for no reason. And then they just said, oh, no, but he's doing it because he's got to feed his siblings. I, I like that. And I also think, um, like... And it wasn't really stated specifically, but it would be really easy for him to just be like, "I, they're not people, right? Digimon aren't people. You can't compare them that way. Yeah. Because obviously he very much cares about life. He just doesn't care about these lives. Yes. Um. Yeah, I think that's... What I really want, though, is in the episode where we have Koki, yeah. I really want his whole motivation that to be, I want to be the ultimate fighter. Like, <laughs> I want it to be literally Masaru's things, and Masaru has to, like, self-reflect and be like, oh, God, this 
is me. That'd be I can't look. I can't remember what his motivation is. But I, I couldn't remember a lot about what the bio hybrids were. That would be a great reason for him to be here. Oh, you know, he, like you're bored with the fighting all the people that you usually fight. So I'm gonna put you against all these like mythical beasts. Okay, I'm on board. Like that would make perfect sense. Like all I remember about Koki is that he evolves into one of my favorite Digimon. Okay, but that is Era Vidramon. No, I mean I love Era Vidramon though. Era, he's 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 a good friend. I'd be so angry if he turned into zero. He's just zero, and he's like this big puppy all of a sudden. No, no, he's like an angry one and he's crap because they wrote it badly. What did you rate this episode? Uh, it's a six, I guess. Like, I give, it's probably, I give it's, a seven. It's a, it's a high six. Like, well, I, a high six, what, like a 6.5? Like yeah, a sure. Seven? Yeah. See, I, I gave it a seven. I like this episode. It's all fight to me though, like, because I think the, the, the story here is so frustrating that like, and I can't look past it. I can't look past how like the water thing made no sense or how the teleporting them to the real world made no sense. So it, it can't be a seven. See, in my rating, I looked past the those story aspects because I just I didn't notice them. I looked past the main element of the plot. Oh, no. But I, I liked the fight. I liked that Yoshino actually did something. I liked that she was able to fight her own fight. Unlike, I keep on referencing Frontier and I shouldn't run reference Frontier, but Izumi and Frontier. Oh, you know what also bothers me? I what? just realized this now. What? Um, what's Falcomon's primary attack? He uses a feather, doesn't he? He throws shurikens. Oh, yeah. No, so, that's Hawkmon that throws a feather. So, Man, I know nothing about Digimon. So, so, I'm yep. tired. So why... Yeah, I've got an encyclopedic knowledge you, you'll remember. Um, this so, is disturbing. Like, as the show goes on, <laughs> Jay knows more about Digimon because his attention span's better. Yeah. So here's a question for you. Why was he going to go punch Kurata when he could have just thrown a bunch of shurikens and that would have just killed him and they would have won the war because that would have been effective they would have just won the war may yes. if they just thrown the projectiles he always throws but it wasn't in the script for him to die yet but he always throws them yeah no okay i didn't realize that and now i understand and that's really annoying but they just do it because they can't kill him yet you know it would be an awesome way to end kurata's arc what if now that in the real world like if that's basically what happens and like falcomon or another digimon like violently murders Kurata to stop him because like he's crazy and he's about to do something that'll like kill all Digimon or whatever yeah. but it's caught on camera and all the people in the real world think they're like you know particularly violent and that deaths are all like you would actually get them on camera being you know like murderers and you could have a whole thing spinning off that it doesn't work so well because they already had the Digimon attacking like Japan so they, everyone everyone knows what Digimon are right Okay, I, I, I do see a point, but also I like the Dragon Balls. How did this episode compare to your predictions in Noxious Synopsis? Well, the siege... You know, I was even wrong on the fact that the siege would begin, because that happened last time. Um, and there were no Piximon in it. So basically, the only thing I got was that the defenders are kind of losing. I think you said that they'd and be... And Yoshi the, fights. Yeah, but you, you said that it wouldn't that, that fight wouldn't finish. It yeah, wouldn't I didn't think here. we would get to the end of it, because I didn't think they would teleport it to the real world! Yeah, well... Come I, on! To be fair, I didn't even remember that happening, and I was a bit surprised myself. But no, I... I you you seem to be kind of pessimistic when you were thinking about this episode. When it, when in your predictions. What, what was your rating that you the gave? The token it? girl. I uh, gave it a five. Yeah. Uh, when it, when the token girl has her focused episode, what do you what do you expect? Do you expect it to be good? I hope it's good. No, no. Do you expect it to be good? Um, I don't know. I, I always will want it to be good, but that's like it's that's not expecting it to be good. I guess I'll just be. I'm not sure. It's it's that's a hard question because I want it to be good, but I don't want to be pessimistic. No. What do you expect? I guess like Frontier just kind of like ruined me and like. Yes, it did. I'm just worried that the girl's not going to be able to stand her own in the fight because girls are weak. And don't ask me. I'm just a girl. <laughs> it's just it's annoying. Oh, you. And this <laughs> and this episode shows us that Yoshino's not weak and Rosamond's not weak and she was able to win by herself sure like she almost died but she still beat Ivan and she beat the Digimon out of him and he had a digi egg next to him so I don't know it's 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 great what was the major difference between the Japanese and the English version for uh, to me it was the dragon at the end of the fight being like oh so you're not into me now I'm gonna kill you whereas whereas in the in the Japanese it was more uh, okay it was still like a I will I will fight you into loving me, right? Oh, you don't love me now? Well, you will after this attack. Like, he was delusional rather than creepy. That's kind of the line. See, I didn't actually get that many differences. I thought that it was a pretty similar episode in terms of comparisons between the English version and the original. So, I don't know, I, just, I didn't pick up anything that was particularly jumping out at me, like, in previous episodes. 
So what do you think about those three bio frontier, whatever you call them now? Do you like them? Do you hate them? I like, like them a lot. I really do. Like, I don't know what else to say. Like, they have good glad you like backstories them. that we've managed to cover. And they have good, fairly good reasons to do what they're doing. They had solid sort of character arcs where you learned a lot about them. And I particularly like Nanami and her whole thing. Just, it was great. And I feel like they didn't really have, like, copy and paste backstories. Like, I feel like Ivan had, like, a legitimate, like, oh, you can be sympathetic towards this backstory. Like, oh, no, he actually, you know, is doing it for a good cause. And then we have Nanami, who still has a backstory, but she's just doing it because she's bored. (laughs) She's doing it for, like, the crappiest cause possible. So it's these two fairly different motivations that we have, like, this genuine, like, people, people have stolen bread to feed their family. And it's, like, sort of like that. Like, people will do bad things, even if they're not bad people people if it's to help their family so he's doing this thing and he might even know it's bad he probably does know it's bad he probably knows he's on the side of of badness but <laughs> johnny badness i mean the dude's probably mercenary right that was pretty much what i had him down yeah as, and yeah. like he's kind of like got that weird get up and it's just i don't know and it's like it's sympathetic he's doing this for his siblings and maybe maybe they live in poverty maybe they live in an orphanage maybe they're not really si- siblings maybe they're just siblings in an orphanage or something he's got something going on there and it, it's something you can be sympathetic of and even though he's been awful in this episode and it was really gross towards yoshino and every female besides nanami and then kills a digimon just in cold blood it's just to go from you hating a character and then you find out this one thing and you go to like almost care about him and like you, you sympathize with him and it's just i feel like that's actually not bad writing right to be totally fair yeah t- to justify most of his creepiness he does think he's not actually saying it he is saying it but as far as he's aware most of it's in his head until he realizes finally despite nanami's been telling him for probably the whole time that she's known him and we don't know how long they've known each other but nami has not been kept keeping it a secret she's just like you're saying it out loud it's it's strange, but I I kind of love them, and I also like the Alias Three, and they're kind of just like the they they still remind me of Alias Three, maybe because because they're three there are three of them. That's literally it. Yes. Also, I mean, like they're in a similar position where they're the the um what's it called the henchman, I guess, of the main bad guy. Also, I want Mari and Nanami to be best friends. I want them to like hang out together and be like secret geniuses. And Nanami's not so much a secret genius, but Mari's a secret genius. Secret genius. It's great. My second question, which I really hope that you have something to say about, and I think you will, do you think Tom is making a heel turn? No, not at all. In fact, he's stronger in the for the good guys than ever. Because, like, in response to come to the dark side, he used all the lessons he learned from the good side and then won. Yeah, but he looked kind of like when he was carrying an army, he wasn't going to go back to Masaru. And then he wasn't, he specifically wasn't helping the others. He was just standing there on Mirage Galgamon, not being helpful. I never got the sense that it was that way. If it I is, don't know. if he is heel turning, do you think this is better than Yamato talking to a tree? Like, yes. this whole scene, it has, like, the same sort of, you must turn against the main character. And in Cherrymon's case, it was just like, you must turn against the main character. Well, okay. Because you have to. So, I think that his frustration with Masteru is more reasonable in the sense that, like, well, in the sense that you can kind of see it more directly. Because he's not, he's not being the one who's unreasonable. It's, it's sort of everyone. It's not even really Masaru's fault, but it, you can see where he'd be frustrated. My problem here is that he's just demonstrated to himself that being friends with Masteru and co has been good for him. So to heel turn out of that would be really dumb. Right. It wouldn't be as dumb, but it'd be really dumb. I feel like, yes, I I feel like I agree. Like, if he did if he did become evil because of this or did something bad, I feel like it's not as bad as Adventure because Biolotusmon did kind of have some points of, like, you're just this genius, you, you, you're just doing this for your own self-satisfaction, your strength isn't your own, you need to use your own strength and not Masaru's strength because it's not legitimately your strength. Instead of just like, now, what were you, what were Cherrymon's points for convincing T- Yamato? Was it just like look in the river and see your problems and it's Tai Chi? Yeah, it was. It was literally like it was a trick. You or you'll find what your problems were. Oh, it's that guy. I definitely didn't put that image there. Well, now you have to go kill him. And then 
And so he did. And Thomas seems to be actually thinking this through. And he's like, he's upset by it. And he's not saying that he's not. But he's not immediately going to kill Taichi or Masaru in this case. So what, so what would automatically make Thomas just like better naturally is even if literally exactly the same story took place, I much more believe that Galgamon would follow Thomas' orders than Garbamon, who literally said, I don't want to do this. And then evolved and was like, okay, let's kill him. Well, Galmon has always just said, yes, master. He's That's been very much... what mo- I'm yeah. talking about, yeah, I'm, yes. I'm agreeing with you. I'm just like, it is... Very much in Galmon's character to follow Toma because that's just the dynamic of their relationship. And, and we didn't... Like, what was the dynamic between Gabamon and Yamato and was it any different to any of the other kids? Um, not really. Like, like that's, that's a problem I have with adventure that the majority of relationships between... Digimon and partner, they were always just very, I guess, similar. Like, they all seemed like they, there was, wasn't anything that was too much of a standout besides Gomamon and Joe, because that was a great dynamic. You mean Jomamon? Jomamon. It was like the, uh, the, the straight man and the funny guy. <laughs> I guess it is, huh? That was great. Th- they had a good dynamic. But everyone else was kind of... And I guess Piamon and Sora were opposites. But besides that, there wasn't anything too big. But the point is, I feel like blondes get convinced by plant life. It's plants versus blondies. Get it? It's like plants versus zombies. Yeah, that's... That's that's a stretch. No, it's that funny. Is, that is a, that is a. Str- it's funny. It's really funny. Stretch. Anyway, screenshots yeah. of the week because Jay's making fun of my my fantastic Ooh, and this, superior this humor. Stretch. Um, my screenshot of the week isn't actually a screenshot. It's a gif that I made. It's a gif of Masaru jumping into the water and missing the boat. I guess he missed the boat it there. Was awesome. Um, I, I sent through. It was okay. So there were the the defenders. There were three of them firing guns at the Gizmon coming up, and they all miss. And it's the the Sheriffmon. I can't remember what his name is. Revolmon. Revolmon just goes. Oh man, we suck. <laughs> and he looks all nervous about it. Like that's mine because I was like, yeah, you do suck. Oh, I I actually really like Revolmon, and he's he's hanging out with the Tankmon. There were some Digimon introduced this week. We won't go into all the little mini Digimon that showed up on the screen for five seconds because you'd kill me. But what do you think about Bio Spinomon? I, I love him. I thought, it, like, both of these Digimon I thought were amazing. Like, by us, by, the one thing I don't necessarily like, because it, it's just such a weird we Digimon, we strap metal onto things, yeah. was that the spikes on his back weren't just metal spikes. The middle row especially were just very clearly really big knives. Like I'm pretty sure that's unique to Bio Spinomon because Spinomon's actually a real Digimon. And bio, the Digimon with Bio in front of them are only used for this purpose of the Bio hybrids. So I'll just get a picture of the actual bio, uh, the actual Spinomon because I'm pretty sure he's just like a big dinosaur with spikes on him. Oh no, they're just knives. Like they're all knives, I think. Yeah, yeah but so, I don't so, like it. <laughs> so Spinomon just looks like that. No, you see the middle ni- the middle row, just knives. Yeah. Yeah, I don't like that. That sucks. I kind of like him. No, I like the spot. Like, I think they they would be better if they looked a bit more like natural spikes than just like literally knives without handles. Okay, the difference is Bio Spinamon has a green face. Wow, great. (laughs) Yeah, he's got a green face instead of an orange face. I, I like his design. Look, he's a friend. He's a friend. I love him. What about Bio Lotusmon? I think Bio Lotusmon looks great. Do you have it in front of you by any chance? Um, I'll, I'll get it up, but just while we're on the topic of Bio Lotusmon, I, this is another reason I'm surprised they didn't put her up against Rosemon, because it's that sort of Rosemon, Lotusmon. It's probably too close. And people did say that uh, when it was revealed that Rosemon was Lalamon's ultimate form, people stopped saying that Rosemon was Palmon's ultimate form because we never actually got Palmon's ultimate form. People started to say that Lotusmon would have suited her better. Mm. So this is this is Bio Lotusmon. I'll get up a picture of Lotusmon in a second. Can you hand it over? I guess I, I guess I could. It's but very it, small. So yeah, she's kind of like got this like good. frilly she, stuff going on. She's got the weird medical stuff, which is a bit odd. I don't know why she has. Yeah, it's that. because that has snakes on it, and that's where the snakes come no, from. No, no. That's not how design works. On the medical staff, I'm pretty sure on the logo no, no. for the medical staff. She doesn't no have the, the staff because the snakes come out. The snakes come out because she has the staff. Yes. Because that was in the design before the writers did anything with it. Yes. Um. So I, I think, no, I think regular Lotusmon doesn't look that different. She's like, it's basically, it's how to make a bio version is that you basically put something green. So here is what Lotusmon looks like on her own, Jay. Okay. Is it just the one? So it's just, yeah, it's the green. Yeah. She, basically, they just add green to the to her crown. Also, the um the the other stuff is a, is a rainbow. I think that's yeah, it is. Yeah. You can see that it's ju- it does it doesn't bloom like a big flower or anything, and the bottom 
bottom two there look like personas. I think one of them is an interpretation. The other one just looks yeah, like that a persona. Yeah, that does look like a persona. No, yeah, it's just someone's drawing. No, but you're right. It does look very much like a persona. So anything else you want to say about those designs? I th- I think that especially Lotus Mod is actually really good. Yeah. It's, it's a little bit overdone. I think like having two staffs and you know, whatever, like I don't really know why she needs two. Well, it means that she can like attack a dam with one of them and attack a Toma with the other one. Or you could attack the dam with your with one and then attack it with your fists you know, at, the, at the Galgamon. Like you don't have to be weird. On to Postmon Pat, first up we have a weekly poll. This week, the question was, who is the best evolution from episode 29 of Digimon Savers? Jay will read out the comment, and I will read out the results. We got one comment from Chuckmon who says, I like Rosemon's rose-shaped head and green collar design. So obviously Rosemon was the pick. This poll only got 16 votes, and we have a tie. So Rosemon lost with four votes, and Mirage Galgamon and Shine Greymon had a- were drawn with six votes. I like Rosemon's design better. Rosemont's my friend. And I said that too, so it's a three-way draw. No! I thought you liked Mirage Galgamon better. Um, I don't remember. Rosemont's great. Rosemont's great, though. But also now we have her in try as well, so we get lots of Rosemont. So we got a Gmail from Autumn who says, The more I listen to your podcast, the more I realise that I had shamefully low standards for villains when I was younger. Aww. Yes! This is my goal in life! Jay, you're making people be sad about their liking Digimon. This is my goal! Their liking villains. If I can make someone say, I really like this season and then I watched it again, now I hate it, that's my goal. Um, specifically Frontier. Um, That's sad. In kindergarten, I had a dream in which I was Tai Chi and Vamdemon had invaded the human world to find blood. (laughs) Instead of obtaining it in the traditional way, however, I suppose he must have felt it would be more efficient to simply command everyone to suck out their own blood, which he could later just collect in... This is weird. Um, I think everyone's had a similar dream about being Tai Chi, though. I haven't. Uh, In a moment of sagely wisdom that would make V-Tamer Tai Chi envious, I merely pretended to bite myself and kicked Vamdemon on in the back of the head while he wasn't looking. I like this. Algamon and I then went out for ice cream cones to celebrate the liberation of mankind. This is good. This is good. I like uh, this. Even as late as my teen years, I found the likes of Karada impressive and scary. It's pretty embarrassing now. See, I don't think it's that bad. It's pretty bad. Um, <clears throat> thank you, Autumn. That made me feel good. Stop we- making him feel good. We're going from Ember Moto who says about episode twenty one. Why are they act- that, that's a episode twenty nine? Sorry, why are they acting like they don't know what a DNA charge is? They shout about it every time they digivolve their Digimon. Marcus needs to physically punch Digimon to get one so that Argumon can digivolve. They know roughly what it is. Why are they acting like they've never heard of it before? And I think that's fair enough in the sense that like Yoshi does the whole like I know what it is and then can't answer. It's I annoying would be able to that, say it's annoying that she doesn't she doesn't have like an inkling considering she's been with her partner for so long like having watched only watched it for a couple whatever and not really spent time thinking about it and i don't have one even i'd be like oh yeah it's like the The energy of like my will to fight maybe that like is channeled into my digimon to to evolve that seems really obvious and the fact that they've just think oh my hand glows sometimes that's that's weird uh, they said, our discussion about how Thomas was basically Batman inspired them to draw. And we, we talked about and that. And this is what we're talking about really in nice. Digi News. It was, it was good. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we got one from Chakmon on With the Will, who says, everything happens way too fast in episode 29. The best line in the sub end dub is Masaru saying, as long as I get to punch that uh, Gakuran wearing bastard, I uh, I don't care. Uh, I'm sorry. I don't care what we do. And the dub had it as that leather wearing lion. They're both really funny. Yeah. Uh, they knew that May... Uh, uh, would pick that as her screenshot of the week, um, despite it being crudely drawn. Uh, is it weird that the Holy City is filled with Pumpmon? Yes, it is. I uh, love Pumpmon. We my usually find those guys in Renaissance Fair style settings in the forest and autumn zones, and uh, not God areas like ho- the Holy City. Anyway, the best part of episode 30 was the Igumon referring to Ikuto is Ikuto Dono, which that is That was cute. great. That was so great. And May and Jay, a request. Has there been a podcast episode, or will we make one, that goes over the logic of the world that was X Evolution movie. Uh, it was based on the Pen X and the comic that came with each toy. So I think this is because like a lot of people have been trying to defend X Evolution by saying, no, 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 but it makes sense if you have the Pendulum X toy and read the comic that comes with it. <clears throat> Do we have that Let available me tell you. to us? Yes, I have the Pen X. Yes, I've read the comic that came with my Pen X. No, it doesn't make sense. 
it, there's also another manga that was a manhwa. I believe it was Korean originally. I could be wrong. Isn't that what a manhwa it's is? It's called... I think so. Uh, that's why I said I could be wrong. Like, like naturally? Uh, it's called Digimon D-Cyber, and it's an official, I'm pretty sure, licensed Digimon manga uh, set with Doraemon, and they have the D-Cyber toy, which is has sort of the same Digimon as the Pen X, but it was in a shape of a phone. Anyway... So, ha- and even though D-Cyber was one of the most, like, probably the boringest manga, Digimon manga that I've read, um, I don't think that that made X Evolution make more or less sense at all. It didn't, it didn't affect it. There were humans in it. Uh, you sort of get, there's an X antibody and there's an X antibody, like, detector on the toy, like, that it lights up more, but, like, not, en- not enough that looking into it on the podcast and saying about it wouldn't be, like... Oh, no, it, it doesn't make X, X Evolution make any more sense than it already has, I'm pretty sure. I mean, Unless I'm thick. I'll take your word for it. I really don't want to have to read that stuff. And also, I feel like it would be just boring me just saying information. Yeah, pretty much. So, no, I, we haven't covered that in an episode. And I'm, I don't expect that we will. I don't feel like that, that there's a... There's enough explanation to make X Evolution make sense. I feel like they should have just added the explanation in it because it's considering they wanted to make a standalone movie. How long ago did you read it? Um, I know that we were together, but I'm pretty sure it was before the podcast. So it was at wow. least like three, three or four Given years ago. Given how much we found out that you pay attention, maybe I actually do have to read it. And that's depressing. Well, we will read it as part of the manga we have to read. So I guess stay tuned for that. I guess technically we'll get there. But the comics that came with the Pen X haven't actually been translated. I own them, but they haven't been translated. It's, oh, wow. Okay. But they uh they came packaged with the ma- the manual, get your, so they're get very short. Get your senpai short. to do it. I, could, I guess I could get my senpai. Just get him to do I it. I have many senpais. You know the one. Onkei or Sporky? Because both of them are my senpai. I meant Onkei. I know. I, I just feel bad. Like, hey, translate this for me. Yes. No, do that. Maybe it's I fine. could just learn Japanese faster. Look, when it's a dead franchise, there's not much to do. Stop saying. <laughs> Okay, so people kept at the at Madfest kept on coming up to me and saying, "Hey, it's so good to see people cosplaying someone from a dead franchise." I hope they said that to all the Bleach cosplayers. <sighs> they probably didn't. <laughs> I hope they did. Salty. Anyway, continue. Um, we got one from Ellie Vorg who says, The only thing I have to add to the discussion of the Explody Digivice moment is that it's not random lasers they fire out. Admittedly, Jay wouldn't have been able to spot this at the time, but if you know what they look like, you can tell that they're firing specific attacks that their ultimate levels use. I guess that's... The only one I remember was like... I remember them all being from directly from the chest. It's possible only one was, and that was, might have been Matt Galgamon, because now I know he has an attack from there. It's possible. I just don't remember. Um, they continued, They're surprised that neither of us noticed the sign inside the dojo of the dub that says Digimon Natural Ability. Yeah, I didn't notice that either, but that, that, is, that is strange. <laughs> Spelled really badly. <laughs> It and the sign outside are also in what is quite clearly Arial or some other common font. It's kind of hilariously bad edit job, since, especially since the original was in Digicode, not Japanese, so it didn't even need to be changed. I think that's a screenshot you might need to go back and get. Yeah, maybe. Maybe I do. Um, and then post on our Facebook so I can see it. Uh, saying that Master figured out the Digisoul thing first, despite his lack of experience, isn't really the way- right way to put it. He doesn't consciously figure anything out, he just unintentionally happens to put it into practice first, which makes sense because the Digisoul is the f- power of emotions and Master is easily the most emotional of the three. I can see your point about uh, maybe wanting a few episodes of the protagonist trying to use stealth, but consider, the one time they had to hide in episode 29, Masaru and Agumon needed to be physically restrained by Tama uh, and uh, and Gaumon to prevent them from running headfirst into a fight, they'd definitely lose. I don't think they would be capable of avoiding fights for multiple episodes. Uh, the dub significantly changes the definition of DNA, a DNA charge, even aside from the usual feeding off emotions thing. In the original, Bancho Leomon says that it's something separate from the seven deadly sins i.e. the desire to protect someone that fuel the digital basically he said it was like the eighth emotion that was possible a distant classification of emotion i think is what he said essentially he's saying that it's positive rather than negative emotions that allow a digimon to become stronger while remaining in control of itself and they appreciate that the show somewhat fixes their earlier dumb move by acknowledging that the seven deadly sins are not the only <laughs> desires a human can feel even though they really wish it would acknowledge that there are also plenty more kinds of negative desires than those seven and that there are more positive positive desires than just wanting to protect someone. Um, in the dub, Bantra Leomon still mentions the deadly sins, but he says that it's two of these sins which are powering Marcus's DNA charge right now. Specifically, his anger and desire, desire being the show's G-rated term for lust. 
Um, so apparently every time someone DNA charges in the dub, they're thinking of one of the deadly sins. Uh, and there's no distinction between give the kind of sin that causes the DNA charge and the kind of sin that doesn't. But that Digimon can still feed off. It's pretty nonsense. Does this include the biohybrids? Because, I mean, like, Ivan, I guess, would have lost, right? And I guess Nanami would have... Pride. I would think Pride, but, like, Koki also has a bit of Pride, right? No, Koki's Wrath. Come on. Oh, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Everyone forgets yeah, Wrath's wrath. one of yeah, them. Yeah, you're right, Wrath. Everyone forgets. <laughs> no, hers would be Pride then. What would yeah. Thomas be? Um, Because that's also similar to Pride, right? Because they're both geniuses. No, but that's the thing. They're all mirrors, right? Yeah. Like, even... even like. But I don't think Yoshino's is lust. I think Yoshi's hers is... Yoshino's being boring. Yeah, I was about to say, oh, it is. No, no, no. Hers is gluttony because... Wait, no, it's, no, sloth. Hers is sloth because earlier Lalamon said, Yoshi's so, lo- like, so lazy. She just wants to, like, s- lie around and do nothing. Yeah, but that's only... That's, you only hear that from Lalamon. No, 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 no. You never no, actually no. see no, her like get, that. We get it from Yoshi once because she's looking at pictures on cats when she's on... At work and she's like i wish i was a cat because i could just lie down and sleep i mean i guess i don't think that's what's powering her, her digi charge though because the whole point of that is that she wouldn't do it then if she was lazy what's uh kudos because there are there are seven of the the people who have the ics they can't they can't all be unique man because none of them are gluttony Algamon. <laughs> yeah i know that but that's not master Mas- masari doesn't have one he just has Algamon. Oh, she's also wrath <laughs> Um, he can he can be gluttony because he eats a lot of eggs. I guess. Fine, dude. Fine. Um. Oh God, I can't remember them all. And like, oh, is is, uh, is Ikuto envy? Is um that would make more sense no, for Toma? No, Toma. I was about to say Toma because he's envious of Masaru. I guess. I guess we we can make this fit loosely. Yeah, really loosely. Very loose. Like. Persona 5 loosely. Yeah. <laughs> Where, like, I feel like I looked it up and they go, oh, this one was kind of an invented sin that's, like, it's not really one of them, but, like, yeah. it made sense. It's close enough. Isn't being millennial a sin now or something? More or less. Um, we got one final thing. <clears throat> Overall, though, I admit that episode 29 is one of the weakest episodes in the series. Bancho Leomon is frustratingly vague considering he's trying to teach them. Even if it is secretly a test, there's no reason not to try and have them understand it better in the meantime. And while they can appreciate and enjoy Masaru's emotions, reaching the point of an ultimate level charge, the part where Tom and Yoshino try it too and then just kind of go, Rrrr! and apparently they get their emotions to the that same point. It's pretty silly. Because you'd think, and like they did in all the... Okay, here's the thing, right? If what they're trying to do is make it a Seven Deadly Sins thing, and that would be cool. I think the Seven Deadly Sins are awesome. Like, that that would be that'd be awesome. That would be cool. Make them personal journeys, not Masaru's personal journey in which the other two also just achieve their goal because they're there. Alright everybody, join us for the next episode of Paranoia Agent, the final bio-hybrid battle. Or the final decisive battle, Koki, Ultimate Evolution. And the Norstein Family Secret. Or the Day of Parting, the strongest enemy, Toma. God damn it! I didn't think he'd heel turn. He spoke to a tree and then the tree said be evil. There's a flower. And still plant life, plants versus blondies. He decided to God turn evil because he spoke it. to a plant. Oh, listen to what I said. I didn't think it would happen. It wasn't it when it actually counted, which at, is in obnoxious synopsis. At least he's better than Yamato still. At least he has a reason for being annoyed or okay. a little bit frustrated. Maybe if when he gets back, they're like, they treat him badly. I'd get it then, but like if it's really just the things that she said to him, I'm like, gonna get really Masaru annoyed. Masaru just starts being really friendly to him, or maybe Toma just doesn't show up. I can't even remember what happened. I hope it's something good. Oh, because I I think he's there's like a reason there that you could dig up, but I don't think he has the reason yet. Right. Um. Yeah. We have some birthday messages to read, or rather, birthday shout outs. So happy birthday to Eugene uh, for the seventh. I'm shouting out. Up. 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 And happy birthday to both Anthony and Stevie for the ninth. Birth. 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 Shout out. Birth. Birth. Bird bath. Bird. <laughs> Happy bird bath. Bath. Bath bird. <laughs> Never let that go. Bird bath. Never let it go. It was a typo that I made, right? Get ready for June 6th when it gives you a bird bath. Unfortunately, I won't be gives in the part 6 because I feel like it should come out June 6th. Won't be anyway. Gives in. I just want I just want it to be good. It's not going to be. <laughs> I just want it to be good. Be Stop a, expecting things. Ha- happily burp. Hope you have good had a good day because that was days ago. <laughs> Johnny Burpmas. Burp 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 burp. Weekly wonders. My weekly wonder is actually this uh kind of like I'm pretty sure everyone's heard about it by now because it's been like around for four months. But it's like this Twitter story about this. He's like he's the it's BuzzFeed. 
David. He's the artist that does like all the comics on the internet that everyone posts everywhere. And okay, that means that's nothing. very vague. But as Do soon you know as you look at any of art, the ones he did, um, he does. Oh, my, I think my favorite is um, this is the the latest young adult novel. Um, hello, I'm plain looking and I'm really clumsy, except for all my combat tricks. Also, these two uh, white men are in love with me. Also, I'm a vampire. I'm gonna look it up right now his because Adam, I'm annoyed. His name is Adam Ellis, and he is he works for BuzzFeed. He's not the Adam Ellis from Rooster Teeth. They have the same name, but one works for BuzzFeed, one works for Rooster Teeth. Anyway, so he has been allegedly haunted by this ghost called David, and it started up like four months ago, and now it's 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 still continuing, and he updates every like couple of days, and it's like I mean I don't believe it's real, but I'm enjoying reading it, and I feel like he's one hell of a storyteller. Oh, it's the guy with the tall head comic. Yeah, it's tall. Head comics um a lot of them have the same face yeah yeah everyone has uh, it's um, he gets a lot of crap from people i know that because like the jokes are not complicated yes but i like them but like also i can guarantee that the majority of people have seen his comics even if they don't know the, his name they would have seen at least one of his comics his comics are pretty well known on the internet yes they're on facebook a lot and tumblr when you see them you go oh yeah the guy with the tall head yeah and they, they, they're quite funny so he he is being allegedly haunted uh i will he's actually been nice enough to put it together into one like easy to read like story format with all these tweets in the audio meant to read them so you don't have to scroll back through months and months and months of his tweets he's added them all to like a thread and i'll link that that's like i think it's a storify i think that's called yes so you can read that because you don't have to read it also for some of the images that he posts you might like have to up your brightness or a bit because they're dark foes and they're meant to be spooky um i don't believe it's real but it is fun to to read and it, it is very spoop and i made jay read them today because i just i felt like i haven't actually spoken about them despite being like every day i've checked up to see if he's posted an update this is news to me it's very interesting, and uh, it was. It, I know it was very popular when it first started, but now it's kind of like he updates every couple of days. It, he hasn't died yet, so no one cares. Yeah, and the last one was a bit spoopy, but it also like it's like wow, you got really good at image editing. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Or unless he's actually being haunted, and then just like I don't know. Oh yeah, but I bet. It's very very fun, and like. If you're, like, easily spooked, I don't think you should read it. Like, if you don't want to be spooked, because it is a little bit spooky. Not my favourite creepy... My favourite creepypasta is Ben. The the Zelda Majora's Mask one, called Ben. Yeah. That's the best. I think everyone thinks that that's That one's the best. really strong. Because yeah. it's got videos. I think that's what makes it so strong, is yeah. like, oh, just watch the thing in the game now. Yeah, same with, I think it's Murder Mouse and Suicide Squidward or something. I don't know either of those. They're creepypastas. They've, they've got videos attached and they're spooky. I want to see those now. Well, watch them and don't watch them with me because they're actually terrifying. I want to see. But what's what's Murder Squidward? What? No, no, it's a uh, Murder Mouse, and then there's another one called Suicide, Suicide Squ- Squidward. What or does something. that mean? Can you give me it's, anything it's, about oh, it? Murder Mouse, is like this lost episode of of a TV show, and um, Suicide Squidward's the same. It's like a lost episode of SpongeBob that was super depressing, where Squidward kills himself or something. Okay. And it's like got a video and it's like it's... I think it's creepy. I read it like years and years ago. Huh. Anyway, Dear David is quite good. I will link it in the the link dump in under uh, Weekly Wonder, as I always do. What's yours, Jay? Um... I Have you done anything this week? Haven't done anything new this week. It was a sh- it was a short week. We I've had been a long playing Dang and Like that's what I've been doing every day, which I think I've talked about already. Um, yeah, but you can talk about it again. Like I was, I've played I d- more class trials. I can't talk about this game because it's a hundred percent spoilers. Well, I didn't. I was going to actually say the Dang and franchise is my weekly wonder. Be- but then, like, I was checking up on Dear David this morning, and then like I saw there was an update, and I was like, Nah, this, this though. This. So that that was what my my mind. And yeah, you can you can I've choose been designing, one for. De- I've been trying to design your deck in modern. We finally, I think we've arrived at something we're really happy with. And that's cool. And I we we're gonna proxy it up, and you're gonna play it. Yeah, it's gonna be good. Can't wait. You're I'm, I'm to, You're gonna have to pay attention. Yeah, I'll pay attention. Just give me something to chew in my mouth, and I'll pay attention. And like a fidget spinner. Okay, okay, but the GP is gonna take a whole day. I will find a way to pay attention i will have a fidget cube i won't be the only person playing magic with a fidget cube also i think in team formats you can talk to each other during the game that's good because like I, my attention span is not good i and and jay think this is dumb but i need to like i'll be paying more attention if i'm on my phone if i'm then if i'm not on my phone i guess i need to like i need to have my brain on two things or else i can't focus on one thing no i get that 
at times, sometimes I'm like that. But then sometimes I'm like, no, no, I got to concentrate on this. Yeah, but you're different from me. I'm weird. Yes. Like, my brain is not normal. My brain is very different. So I have to be like, my hands have to be occupied in order for my brain to actually focus on what I'm doing. If you really want to see the deck list, it's called WB Tokens. It's by Jelly Muffins on Tapped Out. That's, okay. That, I'm gonna, I can send the link directly to you, but just in case literally anyone cares about Magic on the Gathering on... um Magic on the Gathering? Magic the Gathering on this... On, who's listening to the show i don't think anyone will look it up but if you want to it's there all right this week's weekly poll is is cherry mon more convincing or is bio lotus mon more convincing this should be a hundred percent bio lotus mon i would be shocked i know cherry mon did some magic on i would a river. Sho- be shocked if it was like oh magic mustaches that'll that's the way to go it was the way to go you yes, can find you our link dump linked in the description and this week's weekly poll is as i just said do we do cherry mon or bio lotus mon who is more convincing you can also find our screenshots of the week and our weekly wonders in our link dump and in our description, along with the weekly poll. Our red bubble is also linked in the description, and you can get more than just shirts there too. You should get some things. We get, we've got stickers, we've got shirts, we've got scarves, we've got lots of cool things. Please check it out. You can contact us and stay updated. You can email us at lostintranslation1 at gmail.com, or you can comment on this episode or message us on SoundCloud. You can follow us on at Translation on Twitter, and you can find us on Lost in Translation on Tumblr, Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. We have a screen thread on With the Will, and a red thread in the Digimon subreddit, and we would appreciate if you were to view us on iTunes and or Stitcher and any other podcast service listening app you use. And ratings really do assist people finding the podcast, so we'd really appreciate that. We also have a website where you can vote in our weekly polls, check out release schedule, and our blog posts. Also, on the blog post I wrote about Madfest, I attached a bunch of photos that I took, including one of him from the Powerpuff Girls, and it's an extraordinary cosplay, and I'm very, very impressed. You can also donate to our Patreon, which is linked in the description from as little as a dollar a month. That gets you access to a list of Slack chat group, but there are higher levels with more rewards, such as notes, early episodes, and more. And thank you to our current Patreon supporters, Sam Krieger, who has a podcast called The Moncast with Stevie. Stevie, who is uh, also Stevie Padmon on Tumblr and is currently taking commissions there. With Qinglong, who can find out twitch.tv forward slash with Qinglong. Metal Mamemon, Joe, Penguin Mage, Anime Guy, who is Anime Guy Kurosaki in the number one on YouTube. Chuckmon, Hiro Lado, who is at Hiro Lado on Twitter. Jason Morosky, Ryuchi, who is Frost Magic on Archive of Our Own. Stephen Reeves, who is at Wildwing64 on Twitter. Kaidawashi. Mac, Noam, Riku, Chisai, who can follow at Chisai236 on Tumblr, Kyle, the Lady Bugman, whose anime blog you can find at baguburago.wordpress.com, Small Wolf, who is on Topastic as Small Wolf and has a comic there called Eden the Melancholy, Glitchgoat, Azra McCool, Gene Hackmon, Matthew, Anthony, who is at Anto Classic on Twitter, Lizmet, who is a Lekman on Tumblr, Sithobi, Ellie Vorg, who is Ellie Vorg on Tumblr, Sporky McFork and Spoon, who has a podcast called Going Digital, Megan, Kyliak, Neobu, Jams, The Time Optimist, Silverhead Freak 25, Harm, and Alex. You can also make a one donation on our PayPal, which we found in the description. It's paypal.me slash edgemon. Make sure to listen to us from the podcast. See you guys next time. Bye! Bye. Bye.